Redo of Healer Volume 6, by Tsukiyaru Prologue. We succeeded in defeating the Demon King and making Eve the Demon King, however, the moment we let our guard down, the hero of the gun, Bullet, stole the Demon King's heart, the Philosopher's Stone. The Philosopher's Stone is a disposable magic tool that tremendously increases the user's mana. Its power is terrific, and if I use it, I can use Recovery Heal on the world itself making it possible to turn back time. I will take it back no matter what, I was supposed to have it as insurance in case I fail, so that I can redo, the hero of the gun, bullet, must have some nerve to steal treasure from me. That's not his only sin, he killed the iron hog tribe, he stole my treasure, and killed my friends. I definitely can't forgive him. I'll mercilessly and cruelly take revenge once again, I swore that. Kiruga. You're making a grim face again. Eve. Sorry. I was just thinking about something. Kiruga. Currently, I'm alone with Eve in the Demon King's room inside the Demon King castle. A whole day has already passed since our battle with Demon King Haku. There's a reason to why we have still remained in the Demon King castle, even though I need to head to the Diral Kingdom as soon as possible. Jeez, make me work as well. I can't stand being alone and doing nothing. Eve. Sorry. I'll be careful. Also, how long do you think it will take to prepare that? Kiruga, the reason why I have still remained in the Demon King castle, is to secure legs to head to the Diral Kingdom. There is too much of a distance between here and the Diral Kingdom. Even if I make the raptor run at full power, it would probably take more than half a month to get to the Diral Kingdom. I can't accept that. According to the report from some time ago, I would say around two or three hours. Eve, well done. With the speed of that, we can arrive at the Diral Kingdom before Bullet. Kiruga, I can't let him hand the Philosopher's Stone to the Diral King. Before the hero of the gun, Bullet, returns to the Diral Kingdom, I'll assault the Diral Castle, murder the Diral King and also destroy their magic ritual device. And then, I'll lie in wait for an ambush, killing Bullet as he returns, with a normal method. Our arrival will be late and even catching up to him would be impossible. As expected of someone who led an intelligence force, Bullet understands the importance of moving speed, and will return to the Diral Kingdom at the fastest speed he can think of. However, we can borrow the power of this monster. In the Demon King army, there was a branch called the Dragon Knights. By using dragons as their legs, they could reach overwhelming speeds. If we ride a dragon and fly in the sky, we can reach Bronica, where humans and demons coexist in one day, ran Alit to in the next day, and can even reach the Diral Kingdom in the third day. For that sake, Eve was preparing the Dragon Knights with her authority as a demon king. Are you doing fine with having control over them? Kiruga. Mostly, yeah. I was saved since the people that came back first were all of the Commandant class. Eve. A demon king can make orders of absolute compliance to demons and the monsters. With that power, Eve made the enemy Commandant recognize that she's their master, and using their loyalty, she ordered them to summon the demons in key positions that she can't control. By doing this, she steadily grasped real power. Of course, it's not like all demons have responded to her summons. There are many that ignored the order and escaped far away, to the end. Eve's power as a demon king is only her own overwhelming power and her orders of absolute compliance after all. Eve's position is extremely unstable. To harden that unstable foothold by even a bit, Eve and the persecuted tribes are taking action. Kiruga, what's everyone else doing? Eve, by everyone, she probably means Setsuna and the others. Setsuna and the others are resting in a random open room. They were quite exhausted from the Demon King battle after all. Kiruga. I healed their injuries with recovery heal and gave them stamina recovery potions, but I preserved the mana recovery potions that are expensive and hard to obtain. However, their mental fatigue cannot be dealt with by using magic or medicine, so they are resting to fix their state of health as well. You must be tired too, Kiruga. I heard you also worked a lot while I was unconscious. And even after I woke up, you've been helping me. You worked yourself quite hard in the battle against Demon King Haku as well. But are you fine with not resting? Eve, 
I'm okay. Our ways of training ourselves are different. Kyeruga. I am tired, but it's not that difficult that I can't endure it. It's a dangerous time as Eve just became the demon king. Not only that, Eve would be anxious without having someone next to her. At least until I leave the demon king castle. I want to protect her and stay by her side. Therefore, I am slightly pushing myself too much. Hey, Kyeruga. Is it really no good for me to go to the Diral Kingdom as well? Since I became a lot stronger after becoming the Demon King, I'll definitely be more helpful than before. Eve, you can't. For now, you should be preparing the stronghold as fast as possible. Kyeruga. This time, all the members except Eve will be going to the Diral Kingdom. There are several reasons. Eve only just became the Demon King so she can't leave the castle at a time like that. She has to get control over as many demons as possible, and needs to establish her way of ruling as the new demon king. Getting back after failing in the earliest stages will be extremely difficult. Eve should be pouring her all into her duties as a demon king. I understand, Kyeruga, come back no matter what. I definitely won't forgive you if you go to a human country and stay there without coming back. Eve. I can promise you, I'll definitely come back. So, you do your work as well, Kyeruga. Yeah, I'll try my best. By the time you come back, I will have the Demon King territory perfectly managed. Eve. That's a good reply. After a while, as I was giving advice to Eve, demons came into the Demon King's room one after the other. The village where the persecuted tribes gathered, the ones who took leadership there, and the chiefs of every tribe from their original countries. In that group, there were also people from the Kokuyaku tribe who had scattered to various places. They are going to manage the Demon King territory from now. Eve is smart, and she has received education to some extent. However, she doesn't have enough experience. So, they will be deciding meetings about truling. As expected of the representatives from each tribe, they are experienced and are quick to catch on. Within them, there are people who served the previous, previous Demon King as well. They entered the room, kneeled, and reported to Eve in front of the throne. Eve, the Demon King, isn't participating in the meeting, and is receiving reports about their investigation results, making the ultimate decision. After listening to each investigation result, she nods, and accepts. Afterwards, she received an explanation about the current situation and dissolved the meeting, making the group leave. Once the door shut, Eve let out a big sigh. Phew. It really does make me nervous. The people that lowered their heads to me are people that are a lot smarter and distinguished people. After all, Eve, I'll just give you a warning, but you should only accept after properly thinking about it in your mind. If you let your guard down even a little, you will just become a puppet and will let them do as they please. Kyeruga. You. But even if they do as they please, it's a result that smart people came up with after desperately thinking, right? They should be able to come up with a better result than me. Eve. A naive response. She has mistaken one prerequisite. That's only if everyone's objective is the same. Your objective is to save the persecuted tribes and also make a peaceful world, right? But you know, even if they declare that, their real objective is to only make my own tribe prosper, and thoroughly exploit the guys who made fun of me until now. I can even bet on it. Kyeruga. I was originally concerned about it, but it turned into conviction after seeing the guys that flew to the Demon King castle once they heard Eve actually became the Demon King. Thankfully, they know they can't achieve their objectives until after Demon King Eve arranges a government system, so there's no problem for now. Rather, they are doing well. However, once the government system starts stabilizing, they will immediately start moving to grant their own objectives. Okay. I'll take care, I can understand their feelings of wanting to get revenge at the guys who persecuted us, but then they would become the same as them, and this time I would be resented by the other demons that weren't given favorable treatment, so the same thing will happen again, I will stop that, I will ban all of those things while I'm the demon king, Eve, I see, you're admirable, Eve, Kyeruga, that's an option I couldn't chose, I don't plan to make fun of her just because she's different to me, and I even think that kind of option is noble, this is Eve's kindness and strength, rather, I think I'm taking revenge because of my own weakness, I just had to pick revenge no matter what, 
If not, I would have gone mad and died. In a novel I read in the past, revenge was lifeless. Even if you accomplish it, it was written that nothing remains. However, I don't think so. If I hadn't taken revenge, my life would consist of burning in hatred, withering from tears, and being a living corpse. And, I certainly haven't obtained anything that has a physical form through revenge, but I can trample on the people I hate, steal everything from them, and make them beg for their lives. The pleasure in that moment is beyond imagination, it feels so good, that no alcohol nor woman could compare, I can taste the greatest pleasure, just from that. There is plenty of meaning to taking revenge, there is no greater amusement than that, everyone who tormented me, oppressed me, and stole from me, were all disposable toys that offer me pleasure. I am entering, Demon King Eve's armor, question mark. There's a new visitor in the Demon King's room, it's a lizardman that's wearing knight armor. As you requested, we have prepared two of the best flying dragons. There are no flying dragons that have better stamina or speed than them, Lizardman Knight. Thank you. Arrange it so that they can fly immediately. Eve. Yes, certainly, Lizardman Knight. Finally, the thing I wished for came. Well then, I'll go call Setsuna and the others. We can finally depart now. We'll reach Branica by today, and Ranalit to by tomorrow. And then, the day after that, we will at last enter the Diral Castle. As I was about to leave the Demon King's room, my sleeve was pulled on. When I turned around, Eve kissed me. Kier Uga. I still hadn't thanked you even after you saved me so many times. I want to thank you a lot more, so you definitely have to come back. I'll be waiting. Eve. Eve said that with wet eyes and a flushed face. Even after she became the Demon King, Eve will stay as Eve. And, I want her to stay like that from now. I'm looking forward to it. Oh yeah. Before I come back, make a subjugation force that's under the Demon King's direct control. Or something like that. It's convenient if I have a position. Kyeruga. Yeah, I'll make something like that. It will probably be a big deal if I give you political power though. But you're kind, so you will surely become of my assistance. Eve. Well yeah. Putting it simply, it will be a special agency that can purge without having to do any bothersome procedures. I'll erase a lot of guys that might become hindrances with my prejudice. Of course, for your sake. Kyeruga. I can only imagine a future where a lot of amazing things are going to happen. Eve. Eve and I laugh with each other. One side of feet bullet. My revenge will be over. After that, it wouldn't be a bad idea to live a peaceful life together with Eve. It will probably stay as a bloody life for a while. But at the end of that, a gentle daily life is waiting, the days I'll spend with Eve, Setsuna, and the others in that gentle daily life are charming, parting from Eve, I think about that while heading to the room Setsuna and the others are waiting, chapter 1, excluding Eve, we all came to the gigantic garden in the Demon King castle, it's to borrow a dragon, so we can arrive at the Diral castle faster than bullet, two green flying dragons are sleeping in the gigantic garden, their body length is around 6 meters. These are the flying dragons that the Dragon Knight Corps are proud of. The Tempest Wyverns, the optimum monsters for transport, as they possess an ability to control the wind, can fly at high speeds, and can cover itself in a wind veil, erasing the air resistance to the limit, making the ride feel comfortable. Nearby them, two dragon people with red skin were there. They must be the Dragon Knights. I have been called on by Demon King Eve Sama's orders. We are warriors of the Crimson Dragon tribe. I am called Yonai. Yonai. Similarly, I am also a warrior of the Crimson Dragon tribe, and I am Inaba. Inaba. The two red-skinned dragon people went on one knee and bowed. They are human-sized, but their heads are completely dragon, and they have intensity. The Demon King's orders are absolute. So... They even follow orders like letting a human ride and fly. I look at them with my jade eye. How polite. I'm the hero of healing. Kyeruga. Inaba. Your right shoulder can't go up, can it? Isn't it inconvenient? Kyeruga. I talk to Inaba, who has the fiercer face among the two dragon people. I am amazed you realized it. Previously, I received a serious injury, and it still couldn't rise even after the injury healed. It is inconvenient, but it doesn't cause any problems when I handle the dragon. Please don't worry about it, Inaba. I didn't ask it because of that. I'm a healing magician. 
I can fix it if you want, Kiyohuga. After hearing that, the man opened his eyes widely. It's quite a common condition for a shoulder to not rise, but it limits various actions. He should want to fix it if possible. Are you sure? Please treat me, Inaba. We're going to be under your care after this, so I can at least do this much. Kiyohuga. Thank you very much. Please, go ahead, Inaba. I smile sweetly at him, touch his shoulder with my hand, and use recovery heal. Try move it, Kiyohuga. Oh, ooh, ooh. this is, I can feel my shoulder. My body feels light, to think my shoulder that the healing magicians and doctors of my country gave up on was healed, I don't know how I can thank you, Inaba, you can just show your gratitude through work, send us to our destination swiftly and safely, Kiyohuga, yes, of course, it was a task I didn't feel like doing, but I have gotten motivation all at once, Inaba, while breathing roughly from his nose, the crimson dragon tribe rotates his shoulder round and round, he must be quite happy. Setsuna, who is besides me, opens her mouth. Kiruga-sama, happy. Setsuna, since Setsuna is giving me a look of respect, I nod. I think about this from time to time, but even though Setsuna respects me so much, there are parts she doesn't see correctly. Obviously, I didn't just treat the Crimson Dragon tribe with good intentions behind it. The first purpose is to ensure safety. I wanted to check their memories to see if they are going to betray us, while acting like they are following orders on the surface. I can read the memories of people I use recovery heal on, I was able to confirm that they don't plan on harming us. And, there is one more reason, as far as I've seen with Jedi, they possess the ability to manipulate dragons. Demons all have the power to manipulate their particular monsters, unlike that. They seem to have an ability called Dragon Knight. I wanted to obtain the ability to manipulate dragons with imitation heal, since if by any chance they die, I might be able to manipulate the dragons with that ability. Because of these two reasons, I used recovery heal on him. He's foolishly honest, and I don't plan to explain my intentions to him, since there's no loss for him to think I'm a good person. The people of the Crimson Dragon race each head to the dragon they're in charge of, and call us after installing the reins and saddle. On the saddle, there are four seats, so it seems that three other people other than the pilot can ride it, as they have been combined. Cura, Freya, and Ellen, you guys go to the flying dragon over there, and Setsuna and Gura now with me. Kiyohuga. Since it's an airtrip, it's hard to think there would be an attack, but it's better to be cautious. I split the judgment power and fighting power as equally as possible. The other team has the fighting power of the hero of the sword, Cura, the hero of magic, Freya, and the former strategist Helen, who is in charge of the brains. Even if they're separated from me, those three should be able to live and link up with us. Cura, Freya, and Helen all come up in front of me. I will go ahead, Kiruga. Kiura. Taking separate actions from Kiruga Sama is lonely. Freya, Kiruga Nizama, stay safe. Ellen, you guys take care as well. In the worst case scenario, just move as we talked about yesterday. Kiruga, the three nod, and rode the dragon on the other side. Now, we should go to Setsuna, Guren. We're going, Kiruga. Okay, Setsuna. Setsuna responded, but Guren didn't say anything. And for some reason, she's not in her usual Kitsune cub mode, but in her girl appearance. Guren, why aren't you a Kitsune like always? Kiyohuga. In that appearance, Guren would easily be blown off. The sky is scary. Guren, looking at her closely, her Kitsune ears are flat, and the fur on her tail has shriveled. She seems to be quite scared of riding the flying dragon. If you're scared, just hold on to me. You won't get blown off as long as I don't let go. After all, even if the dragon falls, I would be able to survive and save the people near me. Kiyohuga. This is the first time Gosyujin Sama has been reliable. You definitely can't let go. Guren. Guren firmly clung to my back. It's hard to move, but this is my first time seeing Guren like this. It doesn't feel bad. Setsuna is a bit envious of Guren. Setsuna also wants to cling to Kiruga Sama. Setsuna, please and do that. In exchange, I'll give you plenty of love tonight. Kiruga, NN. 
Okay, Setsuna is looking forward to it. Setsuna. Us three ride the dragon. After Inaba of the Crimson Dragon tribe pulled the reins, the dragon suddenly flew high in the sky, accelerating. The surrounding scenery instantly disappeared behind me. What speed? So this is the world that dragons see. Kaiwa, scary. Gyurin is falling. Gyurin. Gyurin is raising a scream behind me. Kiruga-sama, the scenery is very nice. And the wind feels comfortable too. Setsuna. Setsuna seems to be enjoying this scenery and wind. She's smiling while holding down her hair and wolf ears. We're going at this speed. So although the Tempest Wyvern is reducing the air resistance with a wind veil, we have our hands full with holding on right now, and we probably can't even open our mouths. I'm glad they prepared a Tempest Wyvern for us. I'm about to laugh from the contrastive appearances of Gurin being frightened and Setsuna having fun. Guys, we should reach Bronica in the blink of an eye at this speed. We can't experience something like this that many times, so let's enjoy it as much as we can. Kiruga. Gurin is silently putting power into the hands she's using to cling on to me, and Setsuna is raising a bit more of an excited voice than usual. Like Setsuna, I'm also enjoying the scenery and wind. Dragons are nice. I want to fly one myself someday. We arrived at Baronica by the evening. We were able to link up with Cura and the others that went separately. I heard dragons are fast, but it was beyond my expectations. The Crimson Dragon tribe people are taking separate actions to hide the dragons in the forest. We've decided the union point for tomorrow. So we'll depart to Ranalit to early in the morning. We should have gone much further than Bullet already. Cura, did you enjoy the air trip? Kiruga. Yes, it was one of my best experiences. But just riding it is frustrating. I would like to obtain a trained dragon and fly to my heart's content. Kira, I agree. However, wouldn't it be difficult for a human? Kiruga. That isn't true. If I remember correctly, there is a dragon knight in the Ashram Republic. That person is most likely the only human dragon rider. But if there is a person like that, there is a possibility for us as well. Kira, that reminds me. There was wasn't there. I completely forgot about it. Kiruga. In the first world, there was a dragon knight among the three champions of the Diral Kingdom. His bloodlines were unknown, but a flying dragon was always next to him. He was humanity's sole flying fighting power that could overwhelm the demon dragon knights from the skies. In the first world, us heroes were helped by him multiple times. Transport, supply, seizing air superiority, and so on. He easily handled every possible job. For me to forget his existence, it seems I'm quite out of it. If he is lending his power to Bullet, then the foundation of the plan is out of order. Arriving at the Dural Kingdom faster than Bullet would be impossible. No. Thinking about it calmly, I shouldn't need to worry about that. After all, just like Kira said, the Dragon Knight is a warrior of the Ashram Republic. He was invited to the Diral Kingdom to be one of the three champions ran two years before the subjugation of the Demon King. In other words, it's not going to happen until a bit more than a year in the future. There's no way he would be cooperating with the Diral Kingdom by this point. It seems the Dragon Knight of the Ashram Republic is quite skilled with the sword as well. I would like to have a match with him someday. Kira, don't do it. You're level 200 right now. Your statuses will be too different. Kiruga. Now that you say it, that is true. Fufu, that is troubling. Without you as my opponent, I won't be able to properly have sword practice. Kira. A rivalry of physical ability to some extent is needed to compete with ability. If their statuses are too different, they wouldn't be able to fight. I'm probably the only person in the world that can properly cross swords with the current Kira. If you're fine with me then I can keep you company whenever, it's also a big plus for me to cross sword with you after all. Kiruga. Yes please. Kiruga. You become stronger by crossing swords, I need to follow your example too. Kira. We smile at each other. That reminds me, what are Freya and Delen doing? It's awfully quiet. Normally, they would have jumped at me and hugged me the moment we linked up. I immediately understood the answer. Both sisters are desperately holding in their vomit with pale faces. Kiruga sama. I got dragon sickness. Freya. Semicircular canals. My semicircular canals. They are worn out. Kiruga nizama. Ellen. Although they were protected by the wind veil, 
they were flying through the sky at ultra high speed, and it did sway for these two that don't have high physical ability. It must have been quite severe, from the fact that their clothes aren't dirty, it seems they were able to avoid vomiting in the sky. Come over here, I'll recovery heal you guys. Kiruga. Thank you very much. Freya. Kiruga Nizama. You somehow protected my pride as a girl. Ellen. I quickly use recovery heal on the two. With this, everyone has gathered. Everyone, let's go drink. Because of one thing after another. We couldn't enjoy good food and alcohol for a while. Let's enjoy the times we can enjoy with all our heart. Kiruga. I hear everyone's happy voices. Now, let's quickly go to a tavern. It's been a while since we went to Branica, so if we can. I would like to visit several of my favorite shops. Dragons can't see in the dark, so although we are hurrying, flying at night is fatal, and either way, we won't advance any further today. Exactly because it's a time like this, properly releasing the fatigue in our minds is necessary to show our real power. While I'm at it, I plan to gather information at the tavern, how the general citizens think of Demon King Yura, and I also want to know what changes have been born from Yura becoming the Demon King. Chapter 2 We came to the only town in the world where humans and demons coexist, Berenica. Everyone entered the town. Ellen, you should pull your hood deeply over your head. Don't let your face be seen. Kiruga. Certainly. Kiruga Nizama. Ellen. Following my instructions, Ellen pulled her hood deeply over her head. After all, although I slightly tampered with her appearance by using transformation heal, there are still traces of Princess Norn, who tried to destroy this town. There are many people that still resent Princess Norn in Brinica. It will probably be fine if I changed her appearance a lot more boldly with transformation heal. But I don't want to do that. That dims the feeling of playing around with Princess Norn. Besides, if I'm going to change her face to however I want, without paying respect to her former face, then there's no need to make her a beautiful girl. It goes against my aesthetics. Kiruga Sama Buranika seems peaceful. Setsuna. Yeah. Our fight wasn't pointless. Kiruga. Setsuna says her thoughts while looking at the state of the town. When we left this town, the town was in quite a tattered state. But it seemed to have recovered a lot in a short period of time. Shop owners are energetically touting, and there are many people around. Princess Norn's attack didn't break the relationship between humans and demons, and as usual, Humans are laughing together with demons. A cat theorianthrope type demon is running across the main street while carrying a bundle of paper. Then, she stops right in the center of the town square. Extra news, extra news. We received a follow up report from the new demon king, Eve Sama. Official information from the new regime. Buy it, buy it. She seems to be a newspaper seller. Unexpectedly. The printing technology from humans seem to have grown in Berenica, and they even have the culture of newspapers. People gather around the newspaper seller. Everyone seems interested about the new Demon King's regime. I'm curious about what they wrote about Eve. I'll go by one too. Kiruga. Kiruga Nizama. I agree. Knowing the public opinion is important after all. Ellen. Like that, I purchased a newspaper. I can read the newspaper later, but for now. We're going to a tavern. We already decided on the store we're going to today. It's a popular store, so we'll need to wait unless we take a seat quickly. It's slightly bad-mannered, but I'll slowly read the newspaper while drinking alcohol. The place I'm visiting, is one of the stores I was introduced to before by my friend. He was the only friend I made in Brunica. If he was still alive, he would find a business opportunity in the change of the new Demon King regime and might have suddenly risen in the world. He was an excellent, good guy. I lost a guy that deserved better. Kiruga Nizama. It's a very lively store, isn't it? Ellen. Well yeah. This much is normal for a popular store in a big town. Is this your first time seeing a store like this? Kiruga. Yes, I didn't have an opportunity until now. Ellen. Now that I think about it, I haven't invited Ellen to a store like this before. We departed from Branica immediately after Princess Norn changed to Ellen. After that, we went to the village of the Kokuyoku tribe, the village of the persecuted races, and then the Demon King Castle. I couldn't take her to a developed town. 
nor a good tavern. Be as luxurious as you want for now. Go order everything you're interested in. Gear Uga. Then I will, without reservation. Ellen. This store has many things in its menu. Furthermore, none of them are misses. They've prepared quality alcohol too. It will surely satisfy Ellen. Letting her order what she wants to is interesting, since it shows her personality. While swinging her tail around, Setsuna orders nothing but meat dishes. On the other hand, Freya mainly orders refreshing dishes, like salads and seafood dishes. Ellen chose interesting and unusual things, and Kura ordered anything that seemed to be missing after looking at everyone's orders. Gyurin. It's time to eat. Wake up already. We're having a feast. Gyuruga. The kidsun cub above my head is rounded up in a ball. She was probably that scared during the trip on the flying dragon, as she's sound asleep from getting exhausted. She wouldn't wake up even if I shook her, so I gave up and put her on top of a chair. I'll order some takeaway for her. Apart from than that, I'll also order some staple food. I'll read the newspaper I bought before while waiting for our orders to come. I see. The official announcement from the new regime is informative, and easy to understand. It seems they had been preparing in advance. Gyeruga. What was written on the newspaper, was the government policy from the new demon king, Eve. Other than that, there were tax systems and so on, that the people would be curious about. The comparison to demon king Haku's age is summarized well, and it's easy to understand. Most likely, after learning that Eve became the demon king. The chiefs of each tribe that of work experience on politics used something like a carrier pigeon, to scatter the information to the main towns, but they wouldn't have been able to make this if they didn't start preparing before Eve became the demon king. There seem to be many experienced chiefs who are serving the demon king from two generations ago, so they will probably become reliable. Kierugan is armor. Please let me read it to Ellen. Yeah, sure thing. Kierugan. Ellen narrows her eyes, and finishes reading the newspaper in two, three seconds. Since she has learnt speed reading, she was able to put all the contents in her head in a short period of time. Afterwards, she faces down, and started studying it in her head. She's wrapping her hair around her finger round and round. It's an action she takes when she enters a state of deep concentration. The movement of her finger stops. She seems to have finished studying it. Ellen. How do you see it? Kyeruga. It's not bad. The fundamental plan of action of making all demons equal will make enemies easily. But since those words sound good to the ear, there shouldn't be much complaints in public. Ellen. Why do you think it'll make enemies easily? Kyeruga. That wouldn't be fascinating for the races that were given favorable treatment by demon King Haku, and the races that were finally released from persecution would have thought that it's their turn this time so it will make enemies out of both sides. For short-term stability, welcoming one side would be better, but thinking about long-term, after holding down the disorder at the start, is good too. Ellen. Ellen's view is quite political. It's an opinion that we don't have. How else do you see it? Kyeruga. The fact that they are reducing the tax from the previous generation is on my mind. The previous generation Demon King wasn't particularly spending extreme amounts, and when I looked through the documents in the Demon King castle to pass the time, I saw that he only gathered an appropriate amount of money to use. Even though they are already in a situation where they need money to start up a new regime, they might go bankrupt if the tax is reduced. I am worried whether those people are just reducing the tax as a publicity stunt. Ellen. Well yeah. They're probably going to cut down the maintenance costs on the army. Kyeruga. After all, the Demon King army is mostly made up of the previous generation's followers, so I don't think the new Demon King regime would just choose that existing army. This is just my intuition, but I think that might not be it. In the first place, I know that Eve insists on equality with all demons, but the fact that they allowed them to officially announce that and distribute it to each town seems contrived. Since the people that hold the real power right now are the formerly persecuted races, they should have been revolting more. Returning to the Demon King castle as fast as we can will probably be a good idea. Eve's real enemies might unexpectedly be her followers. Ellen. Yeah, for that sake too. I need to get the Philosopher's Stone quickly. Kyeruga. It should be hard to hurt Eve, 
a demon king that holds overwhelming power and orders of absolute compliance. But even so, it's dangerous. As I thought about that, the alcohol and cooking was carried over. It smells good. Setsuna's stomach made a sound. Kiruga sama, excuse me, Setsuna. Setsuna's face is blushing, and she seems embarrassed. Don't worry about it, for now. Let's just toast. Guys, hold your glasses. Kiruga, everyone holds up the alcohol they ordered. Cheers. Kiruga, knocking glasses together, we started our banquet. We are more or less celebrating the subjugation of the demon king. It's not too extravagant, despite how big of an achievement we had, but celebrating it just with friends in a store that has good alcohol and food is better, since it won't be so mentally fatiguing. If we return to the Demon King Castle, we might be praised extravagantly and have a grand banquet, but that seems extremely tiring. Kiruga-sama, this cooking called Karaneara is interesting, and Setsuna likes it. Setsuna, I also like it. It's fun making it to your liking. Freya, it seems Setsuna and Freya are liking the Karaneara that I ordered. You add ingredients to something that looks like thin bread, and cover it with whatever sauce you like. Several ingredients were laid out, such as fried ground meat and seafood, tomato, other vegetables, cheese, and so on. You can combine them together however you want. The one I like, is the combination of lamb with tomato and cheese as a topping and spicy sauce. Freya liked seafood, avocado, lettuce, and sweet sauce. Setsuna unexpectedly chose only protein, with cow, pig, lamb, and cheese with sour sauce on top. Just looking at it is giving me heartburn. As expected of the Ice Wolf tribe, Kiruganizama, this cuisine tastes good too. Ellen. Ellen brought a red, cylindrical food to my mouth. Plenty of cheese is on it. It certainly is good. Kiruga. It's an intricate cuisine. They seem to have wrapped chicken meat in thin bread, boiled it in tomato sauce, and baked it in the oven after putting cheese on it. It has a soft mouth feel, and the taste has unity. Kiruga. This omelette is great too. The egg itself is soaked with flavor, and it's delicious. Kiura. This is interesting. They didn't pour sauce over it, but they mixed the soup with the egg and then cooked it. Ha. Huh. Kiruga. Kira's favorite was the omelette that was cooked after mixing all the ingredients and soup with the egg. Because the soup was made well, the taste has depth, and it's easy to eat. I've come to this store multiple times, but I still can't see the end to it. They have good local alcohol, and there's plenty of good food. I want to come again. As we talked, the seats became full, and people started getting drunk around us. Demons and humans joined shoulders and stood up. New Demon King Eve's regime, Banzai. Now it's become easier to do business. While reading the newspaper, they're getting fired up. They seem to be merchants, and in the New Demon King regime report, it mentioned that the goods that some demons are monopolizing sales over, can freely be sold. With bright red faces, the merchants talk to each other about the New Demon King regime. It seems their expectations mostly exceed what I was expecting. Since Demon King Haku had a tyrannical rule, this is probably the recoil. Apparently Black Knights have been appearing in this highway recently. The people attacked by those guys get turned into Black Knights, which makes the next Black Knights. What? That's such a badly made ghost story. Gahahaha. Do you really believe it? I thought it was just a rumor. But there are quite a few people that said they saw it. They're laughing it off, but I know of those Black Knights. If their conversation is true, then that's terrible. After all, I thought only the Diral King could make Black Knights. However, if the Black Knights have the power to change living things into Black Knights, the Black Knights will exponentially increase. There's no stopping something like that. The world will seriously be destroyed. I should keep this in the back of my head. I return my senses to Setsuna and the others. Everyone ate up all the food. Since there was quite a lot. We don't seem to need any more. Everyone asks for the dessert they want, since they're girls. They seem to like sweet things, and they're all ordering dessert with sparkling eyes. Next time, let's go together with Eve too. Kiruga. NN. Being left out is pitiful. Setsuna. Yes. This store has such delicious food after all. Freya. Kiruganizama. You are kind. Ellen. 
Couldn't we give her a souvenir? Kira, Setsuna and the others nod. It will probably be hard for Eve, the Demon King, to come to a normal store in a town like this. However, I can do something for her. Today was fun, and it should be even more fun with Eve. After our stomachs swelled out, we moved to the inn. We splurged, and rented a wide, good room. By paying additional fees, we got plenty of hot water to clean our bodies. Other than eating, today we are also going to have some amusement we've been neglecting for a while. I take off my clothes. Now, everyone, take off your clothes. I couldn't give you guys love for so long. I'll do all of you in one go today. Kiruga. Kiruga sama. Happy. Setsuna. My body was always throbbing. Freya. Please give me lots of love. Kiruga nizama. Ellen. Doing everyone together is quite embarrassing. Kira. We didn't even have enough spare time to do this for a while. My patience was basically at the limit, and it was tough for Setsuna and the others too. Making them go in turns is just pitiful. I'll satisfy all of them. Setsuna and the others shyly took off their clothes. However, their faces had expectations for what we're going to do now. It seems their bodies are also prepared. It's a magnificent view of beautiful girls each having different personalities standing in a line. At the same time, it also stimulates me very much. Taking four people in one go might be tough for even me. But these women are all starving for me. I should be able to give love to everyone today. Chapter 3 We spent one night in Baranica, taking a spacious and clean inn. I took care of everyone in a sexual way. It was tough on my stamina to do all of them at once, but it felt refreshing and good. Everyone is fast asleep. Nude beautiful girls sleeping, is picture perfect. I guess I'll finish one task before departing. Kiruga. I got up before everyone else, wrote a note for when they wake up, and went outside. Since we're going to leave Branica, I wanted to do more information gathering. I'll finish it before we have to meet up with the Dragon Knights. As expected of a town active in commerce, the mornings of the townspeople are fast. While shopping at random places, I asked each shopkeeper two or three questions. What I wanted to ask was about the rumored black knights I heard at the tavern. I gathered a lot more information than I thought I would. Most of them were just hearsay, so the credibility of them were thin, but there are a lot of sighting cases, and there were no big contradictions between them, so it seems like the truth. Apparently, the sighting cases have increased recently. I can't really figure out what the Diral Kingdom's objective is. From what I've heard, it just looks like they let go of their reins on the Black Knights and are letting them rampage. No, just letting them rampage is fine. It's rumored that people assaulted by Black Knights turn into Black Knights. So it makes sense if their objective is to increase the amount of Black Knights. Then, the next question. Why are they using such an overbearing way to replenish their fighting power this much? The power of making Black Knights was given to them from the Demon King so no sane person would do this. There aren't much alternatives to increase fighting power this overbearingly. They're preparing for war. If they're increasing the number of Black Knights to go to war, that means I have to defeat the Diral King more and more urgently. If war breaks out, lots of blood will be spilled, from humans, demons and monsters. It's of no concern to me no matter how many strangers die, but I got a lot of acquaintances from people of various places in my long journey. Above all, I don't want Eve to be sad. This is a freebie for you, Sunny. Thanks. Sorry about this, Kiruga. The old lady at the fruit store, one of the people I was asking questions to, threw me an apple. She's a good person. Baraniku is a good town. There are good taverns, and kind people. If possible, I don't want to lose it. For that sake, I need to hurry up and finish my revenge. Once I destroy the Diral Kingdom, defeat the Diral King and then the hero of the gun, Bullet, I'll be able to see the end of my long journey for revenge. If the world becomes peaceful with my revenge, then that will be the best. After finishing shopping and information gathering, I returned to the inn to have breakfast with Setsuna and the others at the dining room. I thought they would be tired since I gave them plenty of love yesterday, but they seem lively. Rather, their skin has luster, and there are a lot of smiling faces. They must have been dissatisfied like me, and benefited from yesterday's sex after so long. I haven't taken care of Eve, 
who's in the Demon King castle. Once I return to that castle, I'll make love to her all day long. While enjoying black tea after the meal, I savored the sweets and fruits I bought earlier when I was gathering information. Kiruga-sama, it's about time. Setsuna. Setsuna looks at her pocket watch and raises her voice. It's already that time, huh? Let's go. Making them wait would be bad. Kiruga, the Dragon Knights are helping us well, so we can't show ingratitude. Before leaving the inn, I get the bento and alcohol I asked for yesterday at the tavern. This is a refreshment for the Dragon Knights. I want them to have at least some enjoyment, since they couldn't rest themselves in Veronica like us. After meeting up with the Dragon Knights, we once again enjoy air travel. Like yesterday, I'm with Guren and Setsuna, while Freya, Kura, and Ellen are on the other one. As usual, Guren is clinging onto me in her kitsuneered beautiful girl form. Guren, can you just get used to it already? Kiruga, Mew, there's no way I could get used to it if I fall. I die. Guren. Guren is complaining while pressing her face onto my back. Then do you want to turn into your kitsune cub form and go in my backpack? If we layer it with cushions, then you might not die even if you fall. Kiruga. That's a good idea. Prepare the blankets and cushions quickly. Guren. Once we reach Ranalita, that is. Well, it's a different story if you have the courage to let go of me right now. Transform and slip into my bag. Kiruga. I'll endure. Guren. Guren is too scared to even let go of me for one second. It's probably impossible for her to transform and move into my backpack. The flying dragons travel the distance we took several days to pass. In the blink of an eye, I'm glad we were able to ride the flying dragon. I can't savor this good feeling without riding a flying dragon. Scenery that I recognize starts spreading out. Kiruga sama we will reach there in a bit more. Dragon Knight seems so. Kiruga, the Dragon Knight calls out to me. Veroniku is a good town, but Ranalitu is a splendid town too. In a good way and in a bad way, it is a town of freedom. It's a chaotic town that swallows all good and evil. That's the place where I met Setsuna. I think I was lucky, since gaining slaves like Setsuna is quite rare. I'll be able to see Ranalitu soon, and then... It was right at the moment I thought that Ranalitu is burning. Kiruga. Black smoke is billowing up while the flame spreads, and the surface is dyed red. Did war occur? Ranalitu is a town affiliated to the Diral Kingdom, on top of there being no human countries that would pick a fight with the Diral Kingdom, which possesses overwhelming power. Ranalitu is a survival of the fittest town. There's a rule that states you have to protect yourself. So rich people get military institutions, and there are many high-level adventurers that are extremely strong, because of that freedom trait. What kind of daredevil would pick a fight with Ranalita? The dragon approaches it, activating Jedi. I strengthen my eyesight and look at the situation. The protective wall that protects the town has already broken, and black knights are rushing in from there, rampaging. The people of Ranalita are desperately resisting. Why is the Diral Kingdom doing that to Ranalita? Isn't it their own town? Kiruga. Since there are Black Knights, that means that the Diral Kingdom is attacking it. In truth, Black Knights are in the vanguard, while archers and magicians with the Diral Kingdom crest on their equipment are in the rearguard. Kiruga Sama. Getting any further than this is dangerous. Dragon Knight change of plans without stopping by Ranalita. Take a detour and head for the Diral Kingdom. Can you tell this to the other person as well? Kiruga. It is possible. Dragon Knight. The Dragon Knight sends a sign, and the other Dragon Knight nods. We might be able to save Ranalita. But dealing with the Diral Kingdom before the Philosopher's Stone gets there is more important. If that gets handed to the Diral King, then it's checkmate. Both dragons rotate. Guren's clinging power becomes stronger than ever. And then, that happened. An arrow reinforced by magic came flying at us. At a speed and orbit that's impossible for a normal arrow. The dragon we're riding splendidly evaded it, but it pierced the wing of the dragon that Freya and the others are riding. Even though it's already abnormal that it can reach that altitude in the first place, it even pierced a dragon's wing. That's harder than steel. The archer that let loose that arrow right now, might be a match for the three champions. 
The dragon Freya and the others are riding descent. I'll head there to rescue them. With my recovery heal, I can heal the dragon and make it fly. You retreat to a more distant place. I'll make the other dragon knight send a signal once I heal him. You have a rescue signal for worst case scenarios, right? Yeah, Uga. Well yes, we certainly do have one, but we are at this height, and as long as that archer is there, I cannot lower my altitude any further. Dragon Knight, don't worry. I'll just jump down like this. Setsuna, come. Kiruga. NN, Kiruga Sama. Setsuna. I carry Setsuna in a princess carry. When I stand up on top of the dragon, Kiran raises a scream. Even so, she doesn't let go of me. What a good girl. I'm off. Pick us up afterwards. Kiruga. After saying that to the Dragon Knight, I jump off. Kiruga, die. I'll die. Stop suicide. If I have to die no matter what, I want to die alone. Guren. Guren, if you don't be silent, you're going to bite your tongue. Kiruga. Good grief. I can't just leave behind Freya, Ellen, and Kira like this. This will lose a lot of time, but I have no choice but to save them. I should think optimistically. If there's such a strong person that can pierce the wing of a dragon, then they should have a certain amount of information. While paying them back thoroughly, I'm going to obtain information. What they were thinking as they did something so crazy, like having a war against Ranalita. I feel like without knowing that, I'm going to trip up somewhere. There's just a bit more until the ground. By striking the ground with explosion magic just before we hit it, I can offset the kinetic energy. My arm that becomes the origin of the magic will be crushed and turn mushy, but there will be no injuries other than that. I immediately use recovery heal, lower Setsuna and Gurin onto the ground, and start running. Chapter 4 The original plan was to spend today restfully in Ranalit to and then enter the Diral Kingdom tomorrow. However, Ranalita was attacked by the Diral Kingdom's army and is going up in flames. It's strange in a lot of ways. To start with, the fact that the Diral Kingdom is attacking Ranalita, a town in its own country, is strange. Next, it's also strange that the regular army is cooperating with the knights affected by the Black Miasma. The existence of the Black Knights had been concealed, and it only became public just recently. How can they so easily accept those ominous and creepy things? Are they not scared of becoming Black Knights themselves? If you get affected by the Black Miasma, you acquire immortality, and your physical ability rises too. However, you lose your sense of reason and become a puppet for the king. That is tougher than death. There are exceptions, like the hero of the gun, Bullet, but there's no guarantee that they can become an exception like him. Escaping before turning into a Black Knight is normal. However, they aren't doing what's normal, let alone that. They are even fighting alongside those monsters. Good grief. This is a troublesome development. Kiruga. The Black Knight's weakness is that they can only fight with simple tactics, because they don't have the ability to think. But the regular army is compensating for that with their support. I click my tongue and run towards the place where the Dragon Freya and the others were riding crashed. What's troublesome, is that there aren't only black knights. Due to the magic strength and arrow the archer sent, the dragon Freya and the others were riding had its wing pierced. They can't be an ordinary archer, to send an attack to the sky that a normal arrow wouldn't even be able to reach, and pierce the strong defenses of a dragon with that attenuated power. Even though Kura and Freya are there, it might be dangerous. Their compatibility is bad against an archer. Kura has no long distance attack methods, and the fact that the arrow reached the dragon, means the enemy can attack from outside of Freya's magic. It doesn't seem likely that Freya can block an arrow going at the speed of sound. The battle has already started. Kura is swinging her sword multiple times. She's clearing away the arrows that come flying in one after the other. I can't see the appearance of the archer. They seem to be one-sidedly attacking from a long distance. Normally, Kira would have cleared away the arrows while rushing towards the direction it came from, shortening the distance, but behind her, there's a wounded dragon. Freya, and Ellen. If Kira leaves that place, the archer would probably massacre the remaining members. She's in a deadlock. Eventually, when Kira becomes exhausted, she won't be able to block the arrows anymore. At this rate, the probability of the archer winning is high. However, 
Unfortunately for them, I appeared as a reinforcement. At this point in time, the archer's chance of winning has gone. I put power into my Jedi, and stare at the direction the arrows are coming from. Calculating the reverse trajectory of the arrows with ultra strength and eyesight and kinetic vision, I find the archer interesting. The arrows are coming from 720 meters ahead. It's a laughable distance. Those attacks are coming from outside of Freya's maximum range of 500 meters. Because of that, Freya couldn't counterattack. Huh. The range of a common bow is around 200 meters. It can't be the work of a human to shoot from over three times the distance. Setsuna, you go join up with Kira and the others. Those Black Knights are approaching them. Even Kira can't take on those Black Knights while clearing away those arrows. Kiyahuga. Since I'm aiming for the archer, the other party also took measures. Around ten of those Black Knights head towards Kira and the others. Those guys are immortal. And can't be killed. Right now, when she has her hands full with clearing away the arrows, even Kira will probably struggle. However, Sealing their movements with ice has already been verified to be a viable option before. Setsuna, who has the power to protect herself from that archer and freely manipulate ice without holding back Kira, will become the best reinforcement. NN, Kiruga-sama, leave it to Setsuna. Setsuna, Setsuna and I break into two groups. Gosujin-sama. What should Guren do? Guren, you just cling to me like that. After all. There are going to be swarms of black knights up ahead, so your power is necessary. Kiyahuga. The archer's position is even further behind the rear unit, and there are many archers and magicians, with many black knights as guards. There are more than just 10 or 20. To neutralize the archer, I need to break through that wall of meat. If there were only a few black knights, I could push my way through with deterioration heal, but that would be tough to do against that number. I need Guren's flames. Okay, I'll purify those smelly people with the holy flames of a divine beast. Trash goes in the trash can. Guren. Hey, Guren, aren't you embarrassed to say the holy flames of a divine beast? Kiruga. It. It's the truth. You're too fussy. Guren. Well, the minor details are fine. I draw my sword. Guren swings her tail. She seems to be putting in fighting spirit. And then, my sword gets wrapped up by Guren's flames. If I cut them with this sword enchanted by the flames of purification, even the immortal Black Knights will die. I have gotten close enough that there are around 200 more meters left to the archer. Goss Eugen Sama. There's like, a rain of so many arrows and magic coming. Guren. Seems so. Kiruga. I'm trying to attack the rear unit alone, so this kind of reception is within expectations. They're quite skilled. Kiruga. I'm slightly impressed. After enduring until I entered the effective range, they fired in volleys at me. In addition to that, it's a full power saturation attack at one person. This is quite difficult. It's normal for there to be people that fire before the target enters the effective range or people that become unwilling and let their guard down as there's only one person. However, the enemy did the correct thing. They properly attacked with all their power in a perfectly coordinated way. It wouldn't be interesting otherwise. Goss Eugen Sama. We're going to die. We're going to die. Guren. Don't worry. I can see it. Kiruga. The eye next to the jade eye shines. It's the Kokushigan I received from the god bird. That eye has the power to see a few seconds in the future. I can see the places where the arrows and magic will impact. From the scene that's packed with destruction. I can see that perfect evasion is impossible. I slide into the place with the weakest attacks. Hold Guren tightly to protect her, and put up a defense barrier. The attack lands, and I feel a tremendous impact. However, it's far off from being a fatal wound. I got through it with minimum damage. Goho, Goho, you should have dodged it better. Guren. I did as much as I could. That was a next to impossible situation. Kiruga. As long as I can just see the future. I can deal with any situation with my over level 200 agility. I incline my head. An arrow passes by the place my eye was just at. This is absurd. In that short break where my tension loosened due to the fact that a large-scale destruction caused clouds of dust and smoke block all visibility, they fired one at my vital part. If I hadn't seen the future with Kokushigan, that might have hit me. They are clearly an irregular archer. 
I'm getting a lot more interested in them. I wonder what type of person it is. If possible, a woman would be nice. And if she was beautiful, then there would be no complaints because of this person. I'm late getting to the Diral Kingdom. Cura, Freya and Ellen were endangered. There's no way I could forgive this person. They are a target of revenge. If I'm going to take revenge anyway, I would enjoy myself more if it's a woman. I dodged the arrows coming flying in one after the other. They all surpass the speed of sound and are aimed at my blind spots. And yet, it doesn't become dull. I can see schemes in each arrow. I'm watching with fascination. How skillful. However, they have the wrong opponent for me. Who can see the future? There's no way arrows could hit me. The compatibility is too bad. The smoke cleared away. Is everyone other than that archer convinced that they definitely killed me? I'm 50 meters away from them after all. The enemy group is feeling shaken. Only the black knights that have no emotions or the ability to think immediately reacted and rushed me. So impertinent. I purposely leave everything to my own violent impulse. Tampering with my status by using transformation heal. I throw away my defense and modify it to be a complete attack type status. With Kokushigan and my speed, the Black Knights and the sporadic support attacks won't hit me. I don't need any more defense. Although I can't avoid any ultra wide attacks, I'm this close to them, and they wouldn't be able to shoot their allies with me. Even if they do, it wouldn't be a lethal attack. Therefore, I can rampage as much as I want. Every time my sword gets sucked up by the Black Knights, they don't get cut, but pulverized into small pieces. Because of my excessive strength, each sword stroke exceeds the speed of sound, and sonic booms spring forth, chopping up the surrounding enemies that I didn't even touch. Interesting. I don't understand why, but when I cause sonic's booms with the sword clad in flames of purification, even the flames mixed up with the impacts. It's an irrational phenomenon that was caused because my over level 200 status was concentrated into offensive power. Even those black knights have their immortality stripped off and die immediately with one blow from Gurin's holy fire clad sword. Arrows and magic come flying every now and then, but they don't hit. They are skillfully arranging their battle formation to block my escape route, but my strength and speed rival ultra-large monsters. A wall of just a few humans wouldn't even become an obstacle. They go flying if I just forcefully jump in without any plans and bump into them. I feel a smile coming up. This isn't a battle anymore. It's a massacre. Where are you? Archie. Come out without running, Kiruga. Because of the melee and excitement I was having, I lost sight of the archer. Well, it's fine, they will be easy to find once I massacre all of the hindrances. I continue killing everything that enters my field of vision. The sword clad in flames of purification for the black knights, and bare hands for the magicians and small fry. My fifth sword broke, with the damage from the flames of purification and my rough handling of it. They only last two or three swings. However, that doesn't bother me. I can take as many as I want from the corpses. Gurin, your flames of purification enchant is delaying. Kiruga, don't say the impossible. This is quite tiring. Goss Yujin Sama, you're just breaking too many. Gurin, every time a sword breaks, Gurin starts complaining as she has to clad them in fire. However, it's inevitable for them to break. Why are swords this fragile? I wonder. A sword that won't break no matter how roughly you use it, would be great. I keep killing, 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 breaking, breaking, breaking. The number of enemies rapidly decrease, and then, no one was left. Strange. The archer isn't here. Did I end up breaking them while I was rampaging? Damn it. Then this would just be killing. The lowest of its kind for revenge. I got too high. I should reflect since I've exhausted myself quite a lot. The Kokushigan is at its limit, so I cancel it. It exhausts both my mental strength and stamina. I also restore my ultra attack type status to a balanced one. In the next moment, an arrow pierced through my forehead and right chest. Dangerous. Because my status is back to a balanced type one. 
They stopped at shallow spots, but they would have been fatal wounds if I still had my ultra attack type status. Blood spouts out as I pull out the arrow. The wounds heal due to Divine Arms Georgius's automatic recovery, auto heal. At the same time the arrow hit me, I caught sight of their appearance with the jade eye. There's no longer any annoying wall. From now on, I won't let my eye off of them for even a second. Arrows come flying one after the other. There was no way to dodge arrows moving at the speed of sound from that short distance. However, there's no need to dodge while just guarding the parts that will result in a fatal wound. I shorten the distance by relying on agility. I don't care how many arrows pierce me since as long as it's not an instant death, automatic recovery, or to heal, will heal it. With this overwhelming, level 200 defensive power, I won't die as long as I don't make my status completely focused on attacking. I can clearly see the enemy's appearance now. It's red-haired woman. Although she's hiding her face with a cloth, there's no mistake that she's a woman. It's worth taking revenge. Finally, the distance becomes zero. I firmly grasp her neck with my left hand, bring it up, and then smash her onto the ground, holding her there. Gaka, redhead. The woman let go of her bow with that impact right now. While I'm at it, I'll also detach her shoulder joints with my open right hand. Now she's powerless. Kaya, redhead. She's crying out with a cute voice. Now, let me see your face tearing off the cloth covering her face. I see a considerable beauty in her mid-twenties. However, I sense deja vu. I've definitely seen these eyes before. Sharp eyes that give the impression of a predatory bird, and a brave face with distinct facial features. Hero of Healing Eru. My father's enemy. I will kill you. There's no way my father would lose against you in a fair fight. I will kill your cowardly self, Redhead. Ah, I remember. Hawk are the three champions, ha. Huh. She has the same eyes as him and has that skill with the bow. There's no mistake. Or rather, why could she tell I was the hero of healing? Well, whatever, I'll know if I use recovery heal to copy her memories and experiences. Coward, what are you on about? Certainly, I did kill Hawkeye, but that's just the result of fighting fairly during a war. I see, so you're Hawkeye's daughter. Huck ear Uga. I have no need to answer, Redhead. Well yeah, but you know, I have several tricks to make you answer me, even if you don't personally do it. Hire her, it sure has been a while. Taking a revenge on a woman excites me. Ear Uga. Having sex with love with Setsunu and the others is nice. But as I thought, forcefully doing it while holding them down isn't bad. You brute, Redhead. Those eyes and this. It weirdly arouses me when I turn the tables on a person that resents me. Because I know the thirst for revenge, trampling on that and disgracing them excites me. I wonder what this is. I can't explain this feeling with words. All I can say is that I really need to thank Hawkeye because of him. I can enjoy this kind of plot. Kia Uga. Tears well up in Hawkeye's daughter as I say that. And she starts struggling. However. An archer can't do anything at this range while being held down. After shutting her up with three punches and tearing off her clothes, she screams like an innocent girl. Ah, this reaction means she's a virgin. I feel like I'll enjoy the revenge even further. Nuu, time for some drugs. Well, how do I put it? It seems like you hate me because your father was killed. But I wonder how long you can keep that resentment. I'll give you a drug that makes you love me. Kia Uga. From my pouch, I take out a specially made aphrodisiac, it's my newest work, this is a special one, since it doesn't just give the user pleasure and amplify their sexual desire, it's my first time using it on a human, so I'm excited. The woman spits out blood, it seems she bit off her tongue, I see, so dying is better to her than letting me do whatever I please, you know there's no way I would let you suicide, right? Kia However. Unfortunately for her, I'm a healing magician, and there's no way she can kill herself in front of me. I immediately use recovery heal and shove a cloth in her mouth. That cloth had sucked up plenty of the specially made potion. The woman starts rubbing her inner thighs, and her eyes are looking at me greedily. Hi he. I wonder how long you can keep your sanity. If you really did love your father and wanted to take revenge, then you wouldn't do or say anything that would please me. Right? Kia Uga. Doing this sort of play on the battlefield is a first for me, 
but I can probably get aroused from this unique situation. Now, how long will this woman hold on for, I wonder. While thinking about that, I showed a smile. Chapter 5 I have a new revenge target. It's the archer that pierced the dragon flying through the sky, disturbed my plans, and exposed Kira, Freya, and Ellen to danger. Not only that, she stuck the coward label on me. Not every single sin is that big, but there's no way I could forgive her for piling up this many. I have to firmly take revenge on her while still being on the battlefield, but far enough for Kira and the others to not be able to see. I messed her up, even for me. It was my first time doing it on a battlefield, but this was a good idea. The blood, flames and life, is stimulating. New enemies came to save the archer, but I massacred all of them. Just using my spare time for that kind of small fries plenty. I can kill them even while swinging my hips. I left alone the guys watching from afar without trying to save her. It seems that this archer is popular since their crotches are swelling as they watch her. What a shameful lot. Well then, this much should be enough. Kiaruga. The archer broke quite a while ago. As expected of Hawkeye's daughter, she was quite solid, but I played with her a bit too much. Although her level, skills, abilities and status are all excellent, she's just a normal beauty. Like that, she wouldn't be worthy of being my property, toy. Without fixing and recycling her, I'll abandon her. I kick the archer to the heartless guys that just let their crotches swell without trying to save the archer. Well, enjoying my leftover food should be plenty for them. You were? They started going at it to a woman that's unable to resist on a battlefield. Disgusting. Do they not have what you call conscience or common sense? Kiaruga. I feel refreshed. As I thought, revenge is great. It's the best recreation. Using recovery heal. I was able to get information. And although her father Hawkeye did not give me the chance to use imitation heal on his abilities. I properly used imitation heal on the daughter's abilities. Whether or not if it was heredity or just a rare, powerful ability. I'm satisfied. The Dyeral Kingdom has turned into something quite interesting. Kiaruga. The corners of my mouth lift up. Since the archer was a great noble and a champion's daughter, she had quite a lot of information. I couldn't even imagine that the Dyeral Kingdom had lacked that much common sense. Although the Dyeral Kingdom was crazy in the first world, they only tried to take over the world by killing the Demon King to use forbidden spells with the Philosopher's Stone, under the cover that they are actually trying to protect humanity. However, the current Dyeral Kingdom is different. They already threw away that cover, but they did so while holding all the power they had, mobilizing all the brutes, they're mowing down everyone that defies them. The Black Knights are only a part of the Dyeral Kingdom's power, and they're trampling on all of their enemies whether they're humans or demons, using forbidden powers. On top of that, it doesn't even matter to them even if it's their own country. Everyone that defies the Dyeral Kingdom, either dies or becomes a Black Knight. They seem like more of a Demon King than the real Demon King. Although I didn't intend on fighting as a hero or for justice, if I let guys like that do whatever they please, my happy life after finishing my revenge would be crushed. I don't even want to imagine a world controlled by the Dyeral Kingdom. So, I'll kill and break the Dyeral Kingdom until no part of it is left undamaged. Anyone that disturbs my happiness will be eliminated. Oh, Ran Alitza sure is doing their best. Kiaruga. Using Jade Eye and overlapping it with the ability I got from the Archer. Hawkeye, I further strengthen my eyesight and kinetic vision, and look at the town with an irregular eye that can even use clairvoyance. This is convenient, since Hawkeye is an ability, I can use it together with my Jade Eye. As long as I have this eye, I can see through everything. A surprising scene is unfolding inside the town. It seems they're putting up a good fight against the Black Knights. The adventurers and Ranalita institution troops are cooperating to trap the Black Knights, rather than killing them, by leading them together in one spot, where multiple people use ice magic and neutralize them. The amount of victims isn't small, but they're firmly opposing them. The Commandant must be good. Well. It is thanks to me that they can use this kind of strategy. If the rear force was safe, they would have been able to follow up the Black Knights. Since I destroyed that rear force while taking my revenge, Ranalita's plan worked. There is just one thing I'm curious about. 
None of the rumored Black Knights that could create Black Knights are there. It's fortunate for Ran Alita since they would have been destroyed if those guys were there. Goss Eugen Sama is scary, he was so rough with a woman, Dremble, he might even do that to Guren someday. Escape Guren. I sees the Kitsune cub trying to run away by the scruff of her neck. That reminds me. Although I enjoyed myself without worrying since Kura and the others weren't watching, I wasn't thinking about Guren. She was watching the whole time I enjoyed myself, huh. I'm kind to my friends. As long as you don't wish for it, I won't do anything like that. In the first place, I don't intend on having sex with a Kitsune. If you feel any danger to your body, then just stay as a Kitsune. Kiaruga. You won't eat Guren? Guren. I won't. Kiaruga. Guren will believe you. So, you can't do something like that to Guren. Guren. Fumu. It doesn't seem to have become a trauma. I'm glad. Looking at her carefully, Kiran is cute too. Although she's young, the fact that she's a kitsune eared beauty is wonderful. When I have free time, I'll prepare her little by little, so that she wants me to embrace her someday. Doing all sorts of things while burying my face in her fluffy tail seems like it'll feel good. Goss Eugen Sama, you're making a face that's thinking about something evil. Guren, it's just your imagination. I was thinking about something very nice. Kiaruga. I didn't lie since it is very nice for me, although it's already late. I guess I'll return to where Kura and the others are. I need to heal the dragon so that it can fly again. When I return to where Kura and the others were, Kura and Freya weren't there. Ellen, what happened to Kura and Freya? Kiaruga. Kiaruga is armor. Kura and Freya went to the town. As the people of Ranalita asked for help. They said it was because you have a strong sense of justice, and would definitely help them. Since the nearby Black Knights were all annihilated and Kiarugan's armor crushed the archer as well as the enemy rear unit, we were able to secure the safety of this place. So, just leaving Setsuna here, I allowed the two to help. Ellen. Ellen, who's in charge of command for when we get split up, cheerfully answered. Ah, I see. That was a good decision. We can't forgive these kinds of inhumane acts after all. Kiaruga. Yes, since you thought that too, you must have gone to exterminate the archer and rear unit that disturbed the flight of the dragon, right? Ellen. You sure read my intention well. Great job, Kiaruga. I stroke Ellen's head, although Ellen is excellent. The problem is that she misunderstands the reason. I make it look like I move because of my sense of justice in front of Freya and the others, and they believe that. Dot if it was me, who shows justice in front of them, I wouldn't abandon Ran Alita. Ellen's decision isn't wrong. Show me the dragon. I'll use recovery heal on it. Kiaruga. I talked to the dragon knight that got close to the dragon. Thank you very much. Hero of healing Sama. However, one of its wings has torn off. No recovery heal could heal something like this. This one can't fly anymore. Dragon Knight. It probably wouldn't work with a normal recovery heal. However, my recovery heal isn't normal. Kiaruga. A normal recovery heal is just a combination of sterilizing and strengthening your own recovery power. In other words, you can only fix things that heal by themselves. Curing a body part loss is impossible. However, my recovery heal is different. Similarly to rewinding time, it returns things to their ideal form. Recovery heal. Kiaruga. The dragon's torn off wing heals. Not only its wing, but even its fatigue and old scars were healed, leading this dragon to its best state. Now it can fly. Kiaruga. I can't believe it. This is the hero of healing's power, Dragon Knight. The Dragon Knight opens his eyes widely and his voice shakes. That's how much of an unbelievable scene it was. Now, what should we do from now? It's already sunset, so we can't let the dragons fly. Above all, Kura and Freya are inside the town. Kiaruga. I look at the town with the Jade and Hawkeye combination, to see the two rampaging. Kura is neutralizing Black Knights one after the other, while Freya is freezing them with ultra-wide scope ice magic. What they're doing is the same as the guys from Ranalita, but Kura and Freya alone, are working like one whole army. On top of being over level 200, they have their strength as heroes, blessed talent values, powerful skills and abilities, and overwhelming combat experience. That's the result of all of it coming together. Setsuna tugs on my shirt a few times, 
Mask Irugasama, call them back, Satsuna. No. They already started, so they might as well just commit to it. We're going to assist them too. Eradicate all the Black Knights inside the town. Kiruga understood. Satsuna. Satsuna nods. Produces ice claws with magic, and then get taught the tactics by Ellen. Dragon Knight, you hide in the forest with that dragon and join up with your partner. Let's meet up at the entrance of the forest tomorrow at midday. Kiruga. Certainly. I wish you the fortunes of war. Dragon Knight. My plans went quite out of order, but it was different to the situation I had predicted. And I even think that this is better. I can even use this trouble to modify my plans. We join Cura and Freya in Ranalita. Since all of us are here, our power to exterminate them has remarkably increased. Our party constantly moves in an optimum way because Ellen thinks up strategies while Setsuna protects her. As Kura is capable of annihilating Black Knights by herself with her flame-clad sword, Kura's range of tactics she can use increased. And then, while I, who can use anything, rampages as much as I like, everyone backs me up. We kill the immortal Black Knights to exhaustion. By the time the sun completely goes down, all the Black Knights in Ranalit were annihilated. It finally ended, huh, Karorga. NN Satsuna's exhausted Satsuna Yes this time was really tiring Kura my mana is completely empty Freya Kirugan is armor I continued using my head too much Ellen I heal their fatigue and injuries with recovery heal However there's nothing I can do about their mental fatigue or mana exhaustion I want a place where we can properly rest our bodies otherwise mobilizing tomorrow will be difficult as we rest on the spot the surrounding people gather around us. You guys are amazing. So this is what they call being a match for a thousand. Ha. Huh. Thank you. If you people hadn't come, Ranalita would have been over. You were so cool. Words of gratitude fly out one after the other. Kura nods. Setsuna breathes through her nose roughly. Freya scratches her nose. And Ellen smiles. Well, being thanked normally from time to time isn't bad. And then, splitting the crowd. A man in his prime wearing an imposing, white armor appears. Hero of Healing Kiru Sama, Hero of Magic Freya Sama, Sword Saint Kura Sama, and your comrades. Thank you for saving Ranalita. If you people had not flown down from your dragon and backed us up, Ranalita would have been swallowed up by the Black Knights. I am the feudal lord of this town. A full real Ranalita. Please, let me welcome you to my residence. And then, I want to discuss the future. Afu, the people around us that just learnt our identity, get in an uproar. In Ranalita, because of a certain incident, the hero of healing Kiru and hero of magic Princess Freya became champions. And since Sword Saint Kura is a genuine champion, I can understand why people are raising shouts of joy. Yes, I will come. Dot and, about the future, let's talk together about how we can defeat the Diral Kingdom that has become evil. Kiruga. Although they knew Kira was the sword saint from her appearance, what trick did they use to see through Freya and my identity? He was the one in control of this town's army, and he seems quite shrewd. He is also the man that developed this town. There's no way he can't be a remarkable person, so it seems like I'll be able to have a meaningful discussion, while properly resting my body at his residence. I'll create the most optimum solution to deal with the current situation and destroy the Diral Kingdom. Chapter 6 Although I was planning to abandon Ranalit to and advance forward, I ended up saving it. Having too much justice is a problem too. While receiving cheers from the people of Ranalita, we head to the feudal lord's residence on a for real Ranalita's carriage. People walk around the carriage continuing to send cheers and words of gratitude to us. Fresh scars of war are engraved in the town, but for them to give me such passionate cheers in this situation. No, it's the opposite, exactly because it's this kind of situation. A champion is necessary. A champion is simply a person to depend on and cling to, like religion. People constantly want something that will make them believe that the future will be brighter. And right now, that's what I am. The feudal lord, a full real Ranalita, stares at my face and then opens his mouth. I did not even think that our savior would appear on a dragon. It's like a fairy tale. A full, 
It was just a coincidence. I was in the middle of heading to the Diral Kingdom for a separate matter, but then I saw the disastrous state of this town and hurried to help. As expected, I couldn't overlook this. Kyuga. While smiling, I gave a suitable response. Saving them was just the outcome, but there's no need to be stupidly honest and say that. As expected of a true hero. A fool. About that. How did you realize that I was the hero of healing? Kyuga. In the fight this time, I hadn't used recovery heal, which is the symbol of the hero of healing. It is simple. Even if her face is different, only Princess Flair, the hero of magic, can use such magic. In that case, the only one that would stand next to her, is the hero of healing. Kyuga. A fool. Now that you say it, you are right. Kyuga. I feel pathetic about myself that read too deep into it. It's only natural that Freya would be exposed as the hero of magic if she becomes serious. Then, my identity would be exposed too. Ha! Huh. We will almost reach my residence. Everyone seems tired so I will give you my best hospitality. Please rest your bodies, and then talk about the future while eating. A fool. Thank you for your kind offer, Kyuga. There's nothing to criticize about it as an environment to rest our minds. Though, there's no guarantee that feudal Lord Afil isn't connected with the Diral Kingdom. If he does try to entrap me, I'll make him regret being born. He really did mean to give us his best hospitality. We were told that it's fine for us to freely use the highest grade rooms that nobles would use. And right now, we're using a luxurious bathhouse. Although it's a bathhouse. It's a noble's amusement that costs great amounts of money to use and maintain. Since I ran around the battlefield, I got dirtied from all sorts of things like dust, sand and blood spurts. So I'm grateful. Kyuga-sama, this, it's nice. Setsuna, with just her face out of the bathtub, Setsuna has a relaxed face, instead of her usual sharp expression. Her wolf ears that are normally up straight, are flat on her head. It sure has been a while since I took a bath. I couldn't quite enjoy one outside of my residence after all. Kyura. Even though this is my first time going in one, it feels nostalgic. Freya. Kyura and Freya are used to it. After all, both of them are genuine, high-class ladies. Ellen is being absent-minded too. Kyurugan is armor. Baths really are great. I would like to use them regularly during our journeys too. It effectively improves our hygiene and maintains high morale. Ellen. Well yeah. I can't do anything about mental fatigue with recovery he. After all, I'll think about how I could make a portable bath with the power of alchemy. As long as we have a bath, we can leave the water and fire to Freya. Kyuga. It's probably impossible with materials like stone or wood, but I'll try to think of something lightweight and portable like a tent. That being said, this is a good view. The skin of beautiful girls I've played with, stimulates me. Setsuna and Ellen's moderate looks and Kyura and Freya's adult-like charm shines further in the bath. Gurin doesn't hate baths either. It's fun. Gurin. The Kitsune cub is comfortably dog paddling. To do something like that here, as expected of her. Well, this is cute in its own way. Well then, I guess I'll enjoy myself in a way I can only do in a bath. I embrace Setsuna from behind. Kaya. Kyuga-sama. Setsuna. Setsuna's nape dies red. That's not because her body is getting warmer. You worked hard for me a lot, so it's your reward. I'll take care of you. Kyuga. There aren't many chances to enjoy situations like these. If I do it in the bath, I should be able to enjoy different sensations and reactions. Kyuga-sama. Just doing Setsuna-chan is unfair. Please give me love too. I froze a lot of them today. Freya. I agree, we worked hard too. It should be okay for you to give us love. Kyura. Kyurugan is armor. Me too. Without my tactics, we would not have been able to repulse the enemy. Ellen. Freya. Kyura and Ellen come closer and plead me. It's going to be hard to do everyone just like yesterday, but I'll do it. With recovery heal, I have an inexhaustible supply of stamina. To prepare for tomorrow's decisive battle. I'll heal their minds and bodies. I kept at it for too long in the bath. That blood rushed to my head. The rise in sexual excitement and the effects of the bath came together, making it into a fluffy play. Since Setsuno and Ellen have small bodies, their consciousnesses were faint, so it was interesting giving them love while they were all limp. Once I have the chance, 
I would like to give them love again in the bath. After changing into the clothes that were prepared for when we leave the bath, we cooled ourselves off. Everyone looks somewhat dazed. Kiruga-sama, that was amazing. Satsuna, I agree. I don't think I can forget about today for a while. Freya, I was too disordered that it was embarrassing. Kira, Kiruga-nizama is amazing. Ellen, everyone mutters their impressions of before. Their gestures are so cute I want to assault them right now, but I'll endure it. It's about time for dinner. Hero of Healing-sama, the preparation for dinner have been made. I will guide you. A servant came. Now. I'll focus my mind, I might be able to obtain new information from Feudal Lord of Will. I was expecting some hospitality from the Feudal Lord, but even more luxurious food than I had expected was lined up. Everyone, please accept this small token of gratitude I had prepared for you. Without caring about manners, please enjoy it how you like. If there is not enough, we can make as much as you would like. And if there is anything you would like to eat, then please ask. We can make it as long as we have the ingredients for it. A fool. This person is trying to make us enjoy ourselves more than we ever could. That's exactly why we have to be careful. It's not like there is no self-interest behind it. And although I like manipulating people, I hate being used by people. I can't let myself overlook his real intention. This is far from just a small token of gratitude. I have never seen a feast like this before. I will gratefully eat it. Kiruga. While smiling, I think about various things. In a way, the fight has already started. While drinking wine, I thought about how I should cut the cards. We finished our meal, and they took out dessert cakes that were beautifully decorated. Today's dinner was splendid. As expected of Ranalita's feudal lord, he probably took out the best things they can offer in Ranalita. Were you pleased with today's meal? A fool. Of course. Even royalty might not be able to eat this kind of meal that often. Kiruga. This isn't flattery. It's the truth. If possible, could I ask what you did after leaving Ranalita? Hero of healing Kiruga-sama. A fool. After leaving Ranalita, I headed to the demon territory. I thought that this war would not end as long as the belligerent, brutal demon king stayed in his position. Taking in a demon king candidate that understands my point. I subjugated the Demon King and established the new Demon King administration. The truth is, I am heading to the Diral Kingdom because I learned that there was a connection between the Demon King and the Diral Kingdom. By ending the connection and letting the new Demon King discuss with a human candidate, I wanted to realize peace. Kiruga. 80% of that is true, and 20% has lies mixed into it. Feudal Lord Afal became speechless from hearing such a large scale story. Is that true? Afal. Of course, as proof of that, the Dragon Knights escorting us are part of the Demon King army. And, the new Demon King Ivaris is my lover. There is room to negotiate the end of this war. Kiruga. To think you went that far, I took the hero of healing Kiruga-sama lightly. As expected of a real hero. To think you would try to realize peace with a method like that. A full feudal lord of full raises a voice that seems like he's impressed from the bottom of his heart. And then, he asks questions about Eve one after the other. It seems he wants a connection with the new demon king. It was the result of various miracles accumulating. However, the Diral Kingdom changed too much while I was away. If I don't do something about the Diral Kingdom, it doesn't seem like we can even have a discussion. Kiruga. I'll hide my real objective of erasing the Diral Kingdom and collecting the Philosopher's Stone. If he learns of that, I know he would abuse it. So that is what happened. In that case, our objective should be the same. Since Kiruga went to the Demon King territory, you probably would not know, but the current Diral Kingdom is hell. A fool. It seems so. Kiruga. Since I obtained memories from Hawkeye's daughter, I know the general situation. The Diral King declared he is not a king but a god, and declared that he would destroy everything that goes against God. Of course, there were large revolts from inside and outside, but everything was swallowed up by the Black Knights. A fool. I thought so since there is almost no magic you can use to defeat that large army. Kiruga. You can't kill them no matter what. At best, all you can do is freeze them or bury them alive to stop their movements. Yes. Furthermore, among the Black Knights, there is a special individual that can increase their comrades. In exchange for a great number of victims, 
We somehow captured it, but, if a town that did not know about that was assaulted, they would have fallen with just one of those units. A fool, I see. So the rumor about the Black Knights that increase Black Knights was real, huh? And, this is good news. If they were able to capture one in exchange for victims, it means there won't be a secondary disaster. If the Black Knights created from that special Black Knight was could create new Black Knights, forcefully capturing them in exchange for victims would be impossible. Feudal Lord Afal, what could the Diral Kingdom's objective be? To be frank, the Diral Kingdom is still trying to take over the world, even now. While entering war with demons over a farce, they received support from countries all over the world while using that as a shield. They have the most talented people and funds in the world so no country could go against the Diral Kingdom. Kyeruga. That's the strange part, they're being so overbearing. Even though there's nothing they can gain from it, I don't know what their objective is. The Diral King called himself God, while demanding the lives of the citizens. Regardless of whether they are from his own country or other countries, he tells the citizens to present their lives. Otherwise, the Black Knights will come. Slaughter for the sake of slaughter. Even we don't know what the king's objective is either. However, all we know is that if we don't fight, we will be massacred. We definitely cannot obey him. A fool. How many thousands of people do the Diral King plan to kill? Slaughter for the sake of slaughter. No, wait. So that's how it is. That's why he called himself God. Ha. Huh. Interesting. Kyeruga. I finally saw it. In the first world. He tried to perform a forbidden spell, that was for the sake of world domination, and it would have made him into a god. He's trying to do that without the Philosopher's Stone, huh? If so, several hundred thousands of souls would be needed. Kiru sama do you happen to know anything about it? A fool. Yes. There is a forbidden spell that existed far back in the ancient times. I saw it set up under the Diral Castle when I was breaking out. That is, Kyeruga. Since it's not something to hide, I teach him about that forbidden spell. Then, Afal starts trembling. He's mad. Afal. If he wasn't mad, he would not have done something like this. You were planning to ask me to kill that mad king, right? Please, don't worry. I will defeat that king out of my own intent. Kyeruga. The Diral King made me suffer considerably in the first world and second world, I need to give back my thanks for that. Once I kill the king, I'll ambush the hero of the gun, bullet, and kill him to finally complete my revenge. That is reassuring. However, it is impossible to go alone. I am making an opposition organization by gathering people from multiple countries, towns and villages. Please work together with us. Three heroes from other countries have already been dispatched to kill the Diral King, but they all had the tables turned on them. No, it would still have been fine if they just had the tables turned on them. They were imprisoned and became Black Knights of Tremendous Threat. If even the hero of healing, Kiru Sama, became an enemy the world would end. Please be careful, Kiru. Other heroes were working in this state of emergency. Ha! Huh. Ten heroes exist in this world. In the Diral Kingdom, there's magic, gun and healing. Sword existed in an allied nation and the others live in other countries. I would like to go carefully, but I have to depart tomorrow. The truth is, I have another objective other than just negotiating. The Demon King's hidden treasure was stolen and I confirmed it with our conversation just now. They are trying to send that hidden treasure to the Diral King. If that reaches him, he can complete the forbidden spell without using several hundred thousand lives. Even if it is unreasonable, I have to start tomorrow. Kyeruga. Is that so? Understood. In that case, please let me give you as much support I can. Using all of my connections, I will gather all the soldiers that can come by tomorrow so that Kiarusama's winning percentage increases by even a bit. A fool. No. Dispatching soldiers to the Diral Kingdom from now is impossible. I want every place to put up great resistance so that the king will have to dispatch his military strength everywhere. I would appreciate that more. Kiaruga. In that case, I will do that. A fool. It's a meager way of helping. But it's better than not having it. I'll take his offer. I want to raise my chance of winning. Even if it's just by 0.1%, Kiru Sama, I have one more request. After defeating the Mad King, the Diral Kingdom needs to be remade. I will perform the actual work, but a symbol to attract people and make them understand. 
is necessary. That is something I cannot do. The hero of healing, Kiru Sama, who saved the world, and his partner, the hero of magic, Princess Flare, can do it. A fool. The Diral Kingdom's influence is great. They can't just lose the country itself to remake it. They need a new face that it will make everyone understand. Feudal Lord Afil is telling me to be that. Putting me aside, Princess Flair is the Diral King's daughter. Would the citizens understand? Kyeruga. That is exactly why it is good. If we prepare a scenario of how she is a tragic heroine that is a part of the royal family, and yet had to judge her father that fell into darkness for the sake of the world. Afil, I will leave that part to you. It's your field of expertise after all. Kyeruga. This was also within my expectations. I knew that this man would think like that. That's why he invited me to his residence. If my lover, Eve, leads the demons as the demon king, and I entrust the diral kingdom to my property, bet, Freya, this world will go however I want it to. I'll make my ideal world. My prior preparations are in good order. So now I just have to defeat the Diral King. Of course, that just is far away. Three unknown heroes that became Black Knights, an insane king that was afflicted by a black power, and the source of that black power. Something that drove the king mad, the hero of the gun, Bullet. I'll destroy all of those, and obtain the world I desire. The decisive battle is tomorrow. Chapter 7 After the meal, we had a meeting with the feudal lord of Ranalita. A full keeping Ellen with me. I returned Setsuna and the others to their room. Our current agenda is not about assaulting the Diral Castle tomorrow, but about what should happen after defeating the Diral King. The world isn't so sweet to make everything go well after defeating a great evil. Rather, what should happen after defeating him might be more troublesome. Exactly because the Diral Kingdom exists, people were able to maintain peace without warring against other humans. I don't want to recognize it, but this is the truth. Without the pressure of a powerful ruler like the Diral Kingdom, it's clear that people with strong desires will begin acting violently. That's not a problem that falls within just one or two countries. With one wrong step, wars will probably spread throughout the world like flames. Humans are greedy. I know that more than anyone. If you expect good intentions from people or expect people to have a sense of reason, the only thing that awaits you is destruction. After the Diral King is defeated, we need something to hold down these greedy people. For that, we have a plan to immediately enthrone Freya and make a reborn Diral Kingdom. Although it'll be the reborn Diral Kingdom, the Diral Kingdom will still remain. Since we can't be as reckless as the current Diral Kingdom, people will eventually underestimate it and the control won't work, but it'll buy time. However, very many problems occur from doing that. After using his black power in public, the Diral King killed all the vassals that opposed him. The remaining few people broke away one after the other, leaving the Diral Kingdom. Its function as a country is already broken. Apparently, they can't even collect tax or execute the law. Even if Freya is enthroned, the Diral Kingdom wouldn't have any proper management because of its extreme shortage of capable people. Taking people from other countries would be necessary. However, finding humans that are trustable is very hard. Feudal Lord Afil asserted that he would cover that part. As the Feudal Lord of Ranalita, he has influence across places all over. The conversation unexpectedly proceeded smoothly. Ellen opens her mouth. We need a method to hold down the other countries. The reborn Diral Kingdom that loves peace will eventually allow the opposition of other countries with strong desires. The current Diral Kingdom's support requests that are close to begging is an excellent system in its own way. It moderately holds down other countries, exhausts them and steals their remaining war power. Since the reborn Diral Kingdom will have to protect its clean impression, it will be tough since we can't copy that. This is troubling. Ellen. She's thinking the same thing as me. Ellen also feels that it's insufficient to just set Princess Flair and I in high positions to create the reborn Diral Kingdom. I agree. The Diral Kingdom's begging was due to selfishness, but it excellently performed the task of pulling out the sprouts of revolt. Kyeruga. To protect humanity from demons, the Diral Kingdom collected funds, resources, capable people and techniques from every single country. It made sense for that to happen because they need to uphold peace. By doing that, 
it created a situation where other countries can't revolt. What about this? We declare humanity should take each other's hands. The reborn Dairal Kingdom declares that they will eradicate war for the sake of peace. We will hand down the Iron Hammer of Justice to the country that caused the war, the Dairal Kingdom. We can deter revolts by displaying our power. With three heroes, we can surpass a whole army. Kyeruga. We would be beaten by multiple other countries with one mistake, but it seems we have no choice but to go that route. Once the Dairal Kingdom belongs to Kyeruga and his armor. I would want to instigate a country from somewhere to rampage, and then crushingly defeat them as an example of what happens if they oppose you. Kiruga Nizama. Stupid people will not understand through just words. Ellen. Ellen smiles sweetly. That gesture was too much of a mismatch with her words, that it's bizarre. Feudal Lord Afil has a stiff expression. I should make sure to not make you guys my enemies no matter what, although you are extreme. I can cooperate as long as it's rational and our interests match. A full feudal lord a full. I cannot forgive people that steal from me, but you wouldn't be able to steal anything from me. Kyeruga. That's my rule, to the end. I'm only a person that takes revenge, and I need to be right. Otherwise, I would become the same as those pieces of trash. Hero of healing. Kyeru-sama. I understand what we will do from now on. But how do you plan to assault the royal castle with such a small amount of people? Afu. We're going to break in through the royal castle's escape route. In a royal castle, there are always hidden escape routes to let the royalty escape, no matter what. It is the same for the Dyeral Castle too. And Princess Flair, who is royalty, knows of that escape route. Kyeruga. To be exact, it's me who knows about it since I got it from Freya's memories, with recovery heal. I raised her own memories, so she doesn't remember it. If we go through the escape route, we can sneak into the royal castle with minimum waste. Would it not be dangerous? The Dyeral King is fully aware that Princess Flair is accompanying you, so he should be guarding the escape route. A fool. He probably is. However, a king shouldn't want anyone to know about the escape route, even his own soldiers. Even if he does dispatch soldiers, he would only place a few, trustworthy soldiers. On top of that, the width of the escape route is narrow, so the soldiers under the king's control can't use numbers to their advantage. It's several dozen times safer than cutting across the castle town and passing through the gate. Kyeruga. Ellen nods beside me. This is something we have already discussed thoroughly. I see. Now that you mention it, you are completely right. I have one more concern. There is no proof that the Dyeral King is in the castle. There is no point in occupying the castle without being able to defeat the Dyeral King. Afil. I make a small smile. Feudal Lord Afil has a fundamental misunderstanding. That is wrong. My number one priority is to destroy that absurd forbidden spell before the Philosopher's Stone reaches him. If he activates the forbidden spell, that's the end. Fortunately, moving the device to activate the forbidden spell is impossible. The fact that it is to stay in the Dyeral Castle is a major point. If I just destroy the forbidden spell, we can deal with the Dyeral King afterwards. Kyeruga. It's not that threatening if there are only Black Knights. Same for the Dyeral King himself, and although I didn't say it too loud, it would be impossible for the Dyeral King to be absent. The Dyeral King is fixated on a certain forbidden spell, so it's impossible for him to leave the royal castle in this situation. Certainly, I am still inexperienced. I had overlooked the first priority, Hero of Healing, Kiru Sama. I am carrying out things that I can do in my own way. Like an ordinary person, I will tread on the ground and support you people. So, please save this country. No, humanity. A fool. Please leave it to me. I am a hero after all. Kiruga. After confirming a few more things, we ended our meeting. I'll go back to my room and sleep restfully. I gave them plenty of love in the bath so I won't have any more sex with Freya and the others. The next morning, we eat breakfast, come out of the residence and leave the town. While we were leaving Granalita, many people sent cheers to us. It's been a while since I experienced such a hero-like event. In the first world, I experienced various things because I was like an extra of Flair and the others, but I had almost none in the second world. The only one I can remember is when Princess Flair came to pick me up, and everyone in the village sent me off. Kiruga-sama, I received strength from everyone's cheering. Freya, 
NN, Setsuna is into it now. Setsuna, I feel like I don't want to lose from the bottom of my heart. Kira, Kirugan is armor is very popular. Ellen, Gurin prefers meat over cheers. Gurin, everyone had their own thoughts, and are making good faces. We meet up with the dragon knights outside of the town and straddle the dragons. Did you replace the dragon? Kiruga, it's not the dragon that took care of us for two days, its face and size are different. You realized well, the truth is, this guy was selfishly saying that he wants Kiruga sama to ride him. He must have wanted to repay you, dragon knight. Cry, dragon, the dragon roars. Kiruga's first stood on end from surprise as she had transformed into her kitsune cub state, we're the ones that want to thank you for looking after us, I'm counting on you for this last job, Kiruga. Instead of a reply, the dragon spreads its wings, rather than words, it's talking to me with actions, I don't hate that kind of thing, the dragon powerfully flaps its wings and flutter about in the sky. Once this battle ends, I would like to ride it as a rider, instead of being a guest. I would probably be able to fly through the sky well with this guy, the dragons flutter about in the sky. And then, they go past the Diral Kingdom, the destination is past it, the Diral Kingdom has a gigantic waterfall behind it, and we have the dragons let us off there. Walking through the forest near the waterfall, I dig the roots of a plain, large tree and find a cover with a handle that was ingeniously hidden. I unlock it with alchemy magic and step into the underground entrance, the exit of the hidden passage is on the other side of the waterfall, where tremendous splashes of water occur in front of me, and on the opposite side, there's a tunnel that continues to the castle, Kirugasama, I am surprised it comes out to a place like this, that connects to the castle's underground, Freya, it's the royalty's emergency escape route. They devoted schemes to make it not able to be found. Kiruga. They use escape routes when the castle is about to fall. Even if pursuers from the castle find the escape route, they would only think you jumped off the waterfall. In reality, they actually don't suspect that there's a hidden route to the forest from here. For that sake, they have multiple splits in the hidden route. Guys, don't separate from me no matter what happens. There are so many splits from here that it's shocking. The routes other than the correct ones are storms of instant death traps. Kiruga. This is a standard trick for escape routes. It buys time and decreases the number of enemies by creating a mountain of splits and traps. To protect the lives of the royalty, the best engineer in this age made many traps with the best of his abilities. If I challenged it properly, it's questionable whether even I would make it out safely. Incidentally, the alchemist that made this escape route was killed by the king, the reason is simply that he knew all the correct routes and traps. Fortunately, Princess Flair's memories were correct, as we haven't seen a single trap even after walking for 30 minutes. Kirugan is armor, it's amazing how you found out a top secret of the Diral Kingdom. Ellen, it was hard, but I got it somehow. Well, I thought we could preserve our power until we reached the castle without meeting any enemies. But it doesn't seem like it will go that way. One of my colleagues seems to have appeared. Kiruga. Even the designer was killed to protect the secret of the designer, but my hope of the king not dispatching soldiers to protect the secret was naive. Living corpses wrapped up in a black haze are obstructing the path. There's nothing to worry about for secrets to the Black Knights. Since he has absolute control over them, the secret wouldn't leak outside. And the reason I said colleague is because the opponent is a hero, on that conspicuously standing out, muscular giant's hand, the crest that signifies he's a hero is still shining, even after being engulfed in darkness, Gurin, lend me your flames, he's a formidable enemy, Kiruga, can't be helped, Gurin will lend you her power, Gosyu Jin Sama really can't do anything without Gurin, Gurin, while complaining, Gurin's flames engulf my sword, the weapon the hero in front of me specializes in is the axe. He's the hero of the axe. Huh. This will probably be just right for warming up. If I can't easily beat one immortal hero that lost his sense of reason, I can't beat the hero of the gun who retained his sense of reason while being immortal. I'll instantly kill him and get some confidence. Grasping my burning sword tightly, I strongly step forward. Chapter 8. 
We were running through the Diral Castle's escape route and encountered an enemy group. Among them, one of the three heroes that challenged the king and was defeated, the hero of the axe, was there. I tried to see his status with my jade eye, but I couldn't. It seems this kind of thing can happen when the black miasma is too dense. When I reunited with the hero of the gun, I couldn't check his status either. Making Setsuna and the others fight this powerful enemy whose power I can't even grasp, is dangerous. They're major parts of my fighting power, and my important property, pets. It seems there's no choice but for me to take him on. I'll fight against the hero of the axe. Setsuna and the others, deal with the rest for me. Kyeruga. I quickly shout. That's the optimum solution for our current party. Freya and the others take up their own weapons and nod. Guren's flames coil around my sword. Aaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaa
It's a trite way of thinking and is an easy technique to implement with magic, but no one tries to do this because it's a double-edged sword that damages your body. Using it to just move faster for an instant is the limit, and the worst case scenario is to become unable to move at an unintentional timing. However, I have automatic recovery, auto heal. It can keep healing my constantly breaking body and maintain my speed, exactly because it's me. I can perfectly use this flawed technique that's full of demerits. My body accelerates. The hero of the axe's attack that was supposed to be right on target misses. I try to step forward because my sense of reason screams that it's a chance, but my instincts ring an alarm bell, so I stop my legs there. Without stopping his sideways sweep that missed, the hero of the axe does a full turn on the spot while accelerating. If I had jumped in, I would have been killed. Furthermore, he stepped forward like that, using his sideways gyration as a shield. That attack won't hit me, but the ground bursts when it hits, so stones and pebbles come flying at me. I hit them all away. To think there was a hero with this much power. Ear Uga. At one glance, it just looks like he leaves it all to his strength. But the hero of the axe actually has splendid technique. As if the axe was a part of his body, he swings it with all his power. The surprising part is that that axe isn't a special weapon, it's just a durable axe. If he was conscious, we could have had the best match where we crashed our strength into each other. It's unfortunate. It's about time to end it. No matter how fast or superior in ability he is, tactics don't exist among the people that are afflicted with the black power. They just try to smash up everything with their full power. I've already grasped the timing. If I'm in the limit breakthrough state, I can defeat him. For the first time between us, I shorten the distance. A green phosphorescence leaks out of my eye, strengthening my jade till the limit. The surrounding scenery slows down because my kinetic vision is at its utmost limit. I can even see the flash before the hero of the axe's extreme speed. What the hero of the axe chose, is an intercepting sideways sweep. Lowering my posture like a cat, I strike up with the handle of my sword from below to deal with his sideways sweep. A sudden gust goes past my head. Twisting my wrist, I raise my sword overhead and slash my sword down diagonally from the shoulder, with all my might. Guren's flames of purification cut apart the black mist and blood spout out. Aiming at the hero of the axe who stumbled forward, I pierce his heart with a thrust. I pull out my sword, the giant falls to a knee. His blank eyes that didn't reflect anything, gained back their radiance of reason. His eyes look at me. I thought he was going to reproach me. But instead, he smiled. Thank you for killing me, hero of the axe. I'm surprised. I've cleared away the black mist multiple times with the flames of purification, but he's the first one that regained his sanity. He's no longer an enemy. I'll heal him. No, it's already too late. He's dead, as long as they are alive. My recovery heal can heal any injury or disease, but it can't heal dead people or even take their memories. The reason he can talk like this is because a fragment of the black mist is still remaining inside of him. However, that remaining black mist is steadily being exterminated by the flames of purification. Tell me, why did a guy of your level lose? Kiruga. Although he was strengthened by the black power, I can't think a guy like this who can fight against someone over level 200 like me, would lose to any normal person. There is a chance that bullet killed the hero of the axe. But the three heroes challenged and lost against the Diral Kingdom when I had reunited with Bullet. In other words, the king has a subordinate that can defeat him. The one that killed me, is Juo, hero of the axe. Then, the remains of the black power inside of him burned out, he said Juo, and although it was cut off, I've confirmed that there is an existence like that. Interesting. I'll defeat that unknown enemy too, Kiruga-sama. We finished. Setsuna. It sure is easy. When we have Gurin's flames of purification. Kura, Setsuna and the others, who were taking on the other small fry while I was fighting the hero of the axe, came back. We've dealt with the enemies here. So now we can advance forward. From here on out, two remaining heroes and the thing that killed the hero of the axe is waiting. I'll need to brace myself even more than before. I can see the Diral King's neck in my head. I want to kill him, 
even a second faster. Chapter 9 After defeating the hero of the axe, we advanced even further forward. That being said, they sure prepared an amazing amount of split roads in this escape route. Not only are there a lot of split roads, they were intentionally made to be similar, so it's hard to distinguish between them. I don't know how Princess Flair threw this complicated path into her head. I'm grateful that she memorized it, instead of having a map. Breaking through here without knowing the path is probably impossible. Princess Flair had great talent in magic, excelled at having control over people's hearts, had a sharp mind, an outstanding appearance and the talent to fascinate anyone with her songs. Other than her personality, she was a perfect girl. Of course, because of her shit-like personality, everything went to waste. In a way, it might have been for the best that she became my property, toy. Thanks to me, her shit-like personality improved. Until now, she took many acts of hostility to the Diral Kingdom, making a countless number of them die. And finally, she's going to participate in the killing of her father. No, letting it end as just participating is boring. So I'll make Freya deal the finishing blow to the Diral King. I wonder how interesting it would be to give her memories back after that. My memory manipulation uses transformation heal, and doesn't delete memories. It just makes them lose the key to pull out their memories. I can return her memories if I feel like it. The troubles thing, is that I love Freya. Showing her the things she's done until now would be fun as revenge to Princess Flair. But losing my precious property, toy, is regrettable. Kiruga-sama. It is embarrassing if you look at my face so intently. Freya. Freya blushes, misunderstanding something. What an idiot. She hasn't noticed what I'm thinking about at all. Well, I was just thinking about how cute you are. Kiruga. I either destroy her thoroughly and complete my revenge, or use her for life as a slave. I'll decide after Freya kills the Diral King. I'll think about which one would be the most enjoyable until the very limit. Kiruga Nizama. This is strange. After the first attack, they have not tried to attack anymore. Ellen. Ellen, our strategist, muttered that. That reminds me, she's a daughter of the Diral King too. Princess Norn. Huh. I didn't have that much resentment to her and it's just a cute little matter of how she killed my close friend. Furthermore, even if she gains back her memories and knows that she opposed the Diral Kingdom, she would just think, so what? She honestly wouldn't receive that much damage from gaining back her memories, so I'll just keep her until I get tired of her. Now that you say it, it is strange. Kiruga. Yes, although the Diral King has fallen off the path of a human, he is not a foolish king. His achievements show that, and yet... It is strange that he only sent out a few soldiers. Ellen. Ellen. What do you think is going to happen? Kiruga. Since I believe in Ellen as a strategist, I ask for her opinion. He may be planning to throw us off guard. For example, he might be pretending to be trying to protect this escape route. Ellen. What point is there in doing that? Kiruga. This is just an example, but he might be trying to destroy this escape route and bury us alive. So he only sent soldiers at the start to make us not realize that. By showing off his soldiers, it makes it look like he is not planning to abandon this place. Ellen. Interesting. Is there anything else? Kiruga. Stalling for time. Sending out soldiers in small groups is a foolish plan, but it is effective if his plan is to stall for time. Ellen. Both of them seem possible. I feel an earth tremor. This is. It seems Ellen's prediction was right. Kiruga. A creaking, unpleasant sound reverberates. Cracks are appearing in the wall. It was in Princess Flair's memories. Other people's memories are quite hard to handle, and some information is unable to be pulled out without the right keyword. In reality, although I knew she had memories about this method of caving in, I couldn't pull it out from her. This is the greatest trap in this escape route. This path was made to let the royalty escape after the castle has fallen. The designer of this escape route was a genius alchemist, and he thought there would be no meaning to leave behind this path after the royalty has left. In that case, to protect the royalty that pass through this path, they will be able to reliably destroy their pursuers by using this escape route. That method is, a scheme to collapse the escape route and crush the invaders, ha, huh. the guys from before were the preparations to make us unable to notice that. Kiruga. Freya. 
Please fire your strongest magic to the ceiling with all your power. Ellen. Ellen shouts. There's no need to worry. I can handle this much with 30% of my power. Freya. Full power. The stones used for this escape route are magic proof. You can tell from the feeling of stepping on them. Ellen. What a waste of money. If they made this whole escape route with magic proof building stones, they could buy one or two smaller castles. Furthermore, it's the height of madness to use it as a disposable path. The citizens would cry from knowing their tax was used to make such a worthless thing. However, it's an awfully effective method in this situation. Flicking this mass away with a physical attack is impossible. It doesn't matter how skilled you are, the only thing that might work is war class magic, but even that can't drive a telling blow because of the magic proof stones. If there was to be an exception, it would be a magic greater than ritual magic which takes a hundred people to cast. Only one person in the world can cast something like that. Freya readies her staff, and swells up an unreasonably overwhelming amount of mana. Following what Helen said, she's trying to fire her strongest magic. From just the amount of mana, my goosebumps won't stop. This is the true power of the hero of magic, Freya. Freya points her staff to the sky. A sevenfold, three-dimensional magic square expands. The cave-in of the ceiling begins. At the same time as that, Freya completes her magic. I will fire a crimson hellfire. Rank 7 magic, flame emperor, Freya. That was a crimson pillar stretching out to the sky. It's a magic from the age of the gods that is two ranks above rank 5 magic. The limit for humans, which is only allowed for the hero of magic. She's already reached the height of her magic from the first world. No, she surpassed Princess Freya from the first world. Even though she's firing such a vast quantity of heat, I don't feel any heat at all. Magic transcends the laws of physics. Because of her perfect control over it, she compressed all the heat inside the crimson pillar so that there would be no waste of energy that leaks out. The crimson pillar pierced through the magic-resistant building stones and continued onwards to the sky. I can see the sky. Pretty Setsuna. With her white wolf ears standing straight up, Setsuna raises a childish voice. This powerful force transcended fear, and instead inspired awe. I can see the sky because it didn't only pierce the escape route, but also because it pierced the castle's top floor that's even further above it. What stupid power. The earth tremor continues, and our surroundings cave in, but we were safe, because everything above us was blown away. Phew, how was that? Kiruga sama Freya. That was a captivating magic. Here, drink this potion. Kiruga. I give her a handmade, mana recovery increasing potion. There are two types of mana recovery potions. One type of mana recovery potion is the one where you melt mana and immediately recovers your mana when you absorb the mana into your body through drinking it. The other type, is the one that increases your body's natural mana recovery. An average magician would be fine with the former, but for people like Freya, recovering a fixed amount hardly recovers anything. Since she fired such an irregular magic, she needs to restore mana now or else. Freya gulps down the potion. Well, since we can't move forward, we have no choice but to go up. Kiruga, breaking through the caved in escape route and moving forward is too troublesome. Fortunately, we're already at the bottom of the castle. So, going up the whole Freya made is faster. I press my hand against the wall. I invoke my alchemy magic that I constantly have set on my abilities, because I like it. Soil and stones stick out from the gouged out wall making a spiral staircase. Even I can pull off this kind of trick. Kiruga-sama. Amazing. Setsuna can't do such a skillful thing. Setsuna. I would like to use magic too. Kira. You don't need to force yourself to do something you can't. I'm just a jack of all trades and master of none after all. You guys will be stronger if you continue polishing your own strong points. Kiruga. I'm just somehow doing well by using the many cards I have. I can't reach Freya's level in magic, I fall behind in sword skill against Kura and fall behind in strategy insight against Helen. Setsuna is inferior to us right now, but in the sense of talent, she has the most among us. We go up the spiral staircase while still being on guard. We fired such a showy firework so that we wouldn't be buried alive after all. 
enemies should come straight away. This time, there's no reason why they would purposely not send out soldiers unlike before. They should be coming at us with full power, trying to crush us. See look, they're here. A countless number of soldiers wrapped in black haze look into the hole Freya made, and jump down. There's a high chance that the remaining two heroes are among them. Guys, listen, if we try to massacre them all, time and stamina will be wasted. So, we're going to break through their crowd and head for the Reynara room. Under that room, his ambition, the spell device, will be there. Kia Uga, the most beautiful flower in this continent, Reynara. We're heading to the pure oasis of the Diral Castle where that flower blooms, the Reynaro room made under Princess Flair's order. It's just like them to hide a disgusting lump of desire under such a beautiful place. Once we reach that place, it's our win. We'll pierce through this mob and quickly pick up our win. Chapter 10 Let alone the underground escape route, Freya's full power magic even pierced the castle above ground making a path. Using the spiral staircase I made with alchemy magic, we ran up to the surface. The black knights made by the Diral King rush on us. Among them, there's a high chance of black knights that can make black knights being there. If one of us becomes a black knight, it will be the end of us. I should be cautious. A rain of arrows and magic comes pouring down. I'll run at the lead. Cura, you protect Freya and Ellen. Setsuna. You can protect yourself right? Kia Uga. All right. I won't let them touch Freya and Ellen. Kura. NN. Setsuna's fine too. Setsuna. Although Freya is an outstanding cannon, her self-defense ability is still low. Because of her training with Setsuna every morning, she finally reached an average soldier's level. But even so, cutting through this carnage would be difficult for her. Goss Yujin Sama. You will protect Guren. Guren. I know. Kia Uga. In her Kitsune Cub appearance, Guren raises a cry close to my ear. If I lose her, we won't be able to defeat the Black Knights. The arrows and magic fired by the enemy landed one after the other in our surroundings. Among them, I just deal with the arrows and magic that do hit. I efficiently knock them down by clearing away the arrows and using superior attribute magic against the magic. Because I used imitation heal on Freya's ability to use all four attributes, I can do these kinds of feats. Since I'm in the front, I nullified most of the attacks so Setsuna and the others in the back can have an easier time. After running through the arrows and magic, I see a crowd of black knights pulling out their swords. Guren. Kia Uga. Okay. Guren. Guren's flames cover my sword. We can't avoid using mana here. Without using the limit breakthrough. Limit break. I experimented with before. I used transformation heal to change my status to emphasize on offensive power, which is risky as my defense becomes thin. That being said, I'm over level 200. If the enemies aren't of a hero class, I won't take that much damage even with my offensive power emphasizing status. Ha, Kia Uga. I sweep sideways with my sword, mowing down the five black knights at the front in one go. Then, their torsos all get blown away. I take another step forward, blowing away the black knights behind them just like the ones in front. Because I used the sword damaged by Guren's flames violently, it broke. What a fragile sword, Kia Uga. Like I said, that's because Gos Yujin Sama's way of using the sword is rough, Guren. I pick up five swords from the ground and use alchemy magic. By crudely melting the sword blades and combining them together, I make a single sword blade. What I made, is a thick, gigantic, heavy and durable sword. Because it was made quickly, the sharpness isn't that great, but with this, it shouldn't break even if I use it violently. With my current status, even this heavyweight sword isn't a problem. I charge and thrust after confirming that Guren covered it in flames, entering the center of the enemies while blowing away the enemies along the way. Then, I rotate with my sword out, cutting everything around me. A countless amount of enemy bodies flutter in the air. My sword isn't broken. All right, it's just as I thought. This can do it. You don't even care about enemy or ally ha huh? Uga. I thought they wouldn't use arrows and magic if I charged into their crowd, but it seems I was naive, probably because their allies are immortal or they're just protecting their simple order to eliminate the enemy. They use arrows and magic, regardless of friendly fire. Once that happens, 
the Black Knights at the Vanguard will obviously be dragged into it too. Blocking it with my heavyweight sword is troublesome, but it's not like I won't be able to deal with it. I advance forward while blocking. Chills run across my spine. With the Sword Saint's ability or seeing, I sense an enemy attack. It's an ability that can instantly understand everything that comes in my sword range. Normally, I would have instantly reacted, but it was too fast. With my sword range of around 2.5 meters, I can usually deal with a normal attack immediately. However, noticing this attack at 2.5 meters was too late. It was so fast that it leaves sound behind in the dust. All I could do was duck my body so that it would miss my vitals. I get blown away by taking a blunt impact. The attack that got me was a lead bullet. It pierced me while making my body all messed up. But the terrible, sharp pain running through me was healed by automatic recovery, auto heal. The knowledge inside me is telling me that this is a rifle. A weapon that only just started being made in a country far to the west. According to my knowledge, although its power is amazing, its range, precision and rapid fire speed fall behind arrows, so it still isn't being used regularly. It isn't even heard of in the Diral Kingdom. In other words, there's a high possibility the person that used it to attack me is a person from another country. Immediately after I stand up and jump ahead. The place I was lying down on was destroyed. I carefully examine where the shooter shot from. All seeing can even infer which angle the attack came from. Although I couldn't block the attack, I did find out their whereabouts. I find an enemy 200 meters ahead on high ground. A man with long hair and haggard cheeks has a long cylinder at the ready. That's the rifle, huh. I cut away the bullet he fires with a trigger, with my sword. No matter how many times faster it is than sound. I can deal with it as long as there's enough distance, a losing hero huh. I really don't want to become an existence that even stands in the way of others after losing. Kiaruga, by using Jedi, I confirmed that he's the hero of the rifle, less tallest life, he's one of the heroes that lost to the Diral King, the other hero should be here too, unlike the time with the hero of the axe. If they're planning to crush us instead of stalling for time, they'll probably send as much power as they can. See look, she's here. The Black Knights make a path. Sprinting through that path, a girl with a leopard-like toned body with no waist sticks out her spear. I repel it with my sword. That was a heavy blow. The girl doesn't get agitated even though her spear was repelled, and thrusts consecutively, making use of the spear's longness. The spear that I should have dodged grew longer than I could see, likely piercing my arm and making it bleed, because of some kind of trick, I can't just evade by going backwards, while exchanging blows, I somehow get near her, spear users are weak against people that come too near them, it would take time bringing back their long spears, and they need time to knock away the enemy, however, something impossible happened, the spear shortened, allowing her to intercept my attack, I click my tongue and jump to the side, a spear that can freely change length is troublesome, it's hard to make a chance where I can counter attack. There, the hero of the rifle's snipe came in, but I just barely dodged it. This is troublesome. Going against both heroes and black knights at the same time is difficult. Although the hero of the rifle is aiming at me for now, if he changes his aim to Freya or Ellen, I'm not sure if I would be able to protect them. So, I have no choice but to risk it here. Freya. In 10 seconds, fire ice magic to the direction I point it and make it as thick as possible. Kiaruga understood. Freya, Kura, Satsuna. At the same time as Freya's magic, I'll make a path. In that time, run through it while holding Freya and Ellen. Ellen should know the destination. Kiaruga, so that's how it is. All right. Kura, Kiaruga sama, Satsuna want to be with you, but will obey if it's an order. Satsuna, don't worry. I will take command while we go off on our own. Ellen, while defending against the rifle and spear hero's fierce attacks, I start preparing to make a path. I heighten my magic and change my ability allocation. Freya finishes casting her magic. Rank 7 freezing magic. Eternal ice prison. Freya, the ground the hero of the rifle is on freezes over, blocking his firing sight. The hero of the rifle just barely dodged it and only his right arm is frozen, although it didn't kill him, 
that should stop his attacks for a while. During that time, I'll make a path. I purposely take the hero of the spear's attack and make it miss my vitals, stopping it with my muscles. If it's hard to block, then I won't block. For that sake, I made my status emphasize on defense. I take a step forward and cut at her, and she lets go of her spear to jump backwards. Because the sword made from five swords was too heavy, a follow-up attack won't make it in time. I drop my sword, further shorten the distance and fling her with an overhead throw far behind Freya and the others. The irritating girl disappears from my vision. Now I can fire my technique. I pick up the sword again and charge it with mana. Then, I hurl it with all my power. The large sword charged with mana sent enemies flying while drawing an arc. A path was made from the place the sword passed through. Since we had climbed quite far up the spiral staircase, the sword pierced the end of the spiral staircase. We run up the path with all their might. The spear that was stuck in me started struggling, and pulled out, returning to its owner. I've confirmed it. This spear is a divine treasure arms. With the spear in hand, the hero of the spear chases us far from the back. The hero of the rifle is on the verge of destroying the ice magic frail made by shooting at it. Although we're at the top of the spiral staircase, both spear and rifle heroes are able to chase after us. It would be fine if it's just me, but shaking them off while holding Freya and Ellen is impossible. So... I'll have Setsuna and the others go ahead while I kill the spear and rifle heroes. The distribution of our fighting power isn't desirable, but I'm not confident that I can protect Freya and Ellen while fighting against rifle. And if I have Freya and Ellen go ahead, Kyura and Setsuna need to go as escorts. Guren, cover all of these in flames. Kyuruga. This is a big discount. So, don't die. Guren. Guren covers the long sword stuck on the wall and the six random swords I picked up on the ground in flames. I pull out the sword stuck in the wall and stick the rest on the ground. This is my weapon stock. The reason I made this stock is to let Guren go with Kyura and the others. I throw Guren in her Kitsune cub state to Ellen. Ellen holds Guren tightly and runs. Setsuna and the others disappear from my vision. I look at the bottom of the spiral staircase. The road is closed from here. Kyuga. As if reacting to my words, the hero of the rifle snipes me. I repel his irritating bullet. It's a battle of time from here. I'll kill the spear and rifle heroes, and then join up with Setsuna and the others. Then, we'll reach the Reynaro room to destroy the annoying spell ritual device. Chapter 11 After letting Setsuna and the others go ahead, I stood at the top of the spiral staircase with my sword at the ready. It would have been easy if the hero of the rifle wasn't able to move any more from Freya's freezing magic, but it seems it didn't go so well. With that status, he shouldn't have been able to defend against Freya's ice, but in reality, he broke the ice into pieces with his rifle. It's my first time seeing a rifle, but it's quite troublesome compared to Bullet's gun. His rifle falls behind in attack range, rapid fire and application, but in proportion to that, the speed and power are higher. It's an existence that centralizes on one point, I can defend against it if I try to, but if he attacks when I avert my awareness or when my posture is thrown off balance, blocking against it is extremely difficult. Just the fact that it is several times faster than sound is dangerous. My recovery heal can heal anything as long as the target is alive, but it can't do anything about instant deaths. Even if I'm shot in the heart, I can still stay alive for a while longer, but if he pierces through my head, it's over. That's the one thing I need to avoid no matter what. And the other troublesome person is the hero of the spear. I could tell from our exchange before that I will have quite some trouble with her one-on-one -on -one compared to the hero of the axe. Her ability is inferior, but the problem is that I have to constantly stay in a posture where I can take the hero of the rifle's shooting. Because of that, I can't end it. Therefore, there's only one thing I have to do. No matter what, I have to kill the hero of the rifle first. If I defeat the hero of the rifle, I can handle the rest. All right. I've settled on a plan. Kyuga, tightly gripping my sword, I dodge the hero of the rifle's shooting. I need to maintain the status quo for just another two minutes. If I can gain two minutes of time, these guys won't be able to catch up to Setsuna and the others. After gaining time, 
I'll destroy the hero of the rifle with an attack that will definitely make me take damage. He's in a place 200 meters away, in a room on the second floor of the castle. I endure the current situation while picturing a method to reach there. I make sure to prevent my posture from collapsing so I won't take any fatal blows. I jump to the back to dodge her spear, but her spear extends towards my forehead. By swinging my head, I just barely evade it. From the nature of that spear, I confirmed that it's a god-made treasure arms and grasped its ability. The spear's length can be changed at will. Due to that, the spear approaches me even after I dodge it, and because it extends, it accelerates, increasing the power. Even for its defense, although it's weak against extremely close attacks is a long spear. This spear can become short and easier to handle. It's by no means flashy, but it's a good weapon in an actual fight. From her posture with the spear, I can see traces of steady, accumulated hard work. A serious, hard-working person. That's probably how she was before becoming the Diarrhal King's toy. My right shoulder gets blown off by a bullet and strikes the wall. No matter how much I stay alert, there are timings where I have no choice. I had prepared myself to take it from the start, but I still moved my head so that it would definitely be protected. A black knight charges into me, so I violently cut it away. Although I defeated the guys here, Guren's flames ran out. So, I take out a different sword. It has almost been two minutes. Two minutes finally pass, and my second sword's flames run out. I can finally go on the offensive. Gyeruga. I'll charge when the hero of the rifle shoots his next bullet. What I realized from our fight so far is that there's a one second interval between each shot. In other words, if I reach him within a second, it's my win. Predicting the timing of his fire, I jump off the spiral staircase. As planned, his bullet lands near my feet. I'm far ahead of the high ground the hero of the rifle is at since even I can't jump 200 meters. As I fall, I hold the sword handle with my mouth, turn both my hands to the back and use a wind and fire composite magic. Blast wave. Gyeruga. It sprung forth, as I said that making me fly to the hero of the rifle with great propulsive power. At this speed, it won't even take a second to reach 200 meters. Counterattacking would be impossible. However, he fired. The one second interval was fake. Huck Ieruga. I see. So he always took a shooting interval of one second to make me think he couldn't rapid fire. Even after losing his sense of reason from the black mist. His long battle experience was ingrained in his body. Rifle users have probably fought a tiring amount of people that aim for the interval between their shots. That's why he learned that tactic. Interesting. His bullets are already bad enough by being three times as fast as sound. And right now, I'm leaping at a speed close to sound, meaning it won't take that long for me to fall. I can't change course after suddenly accelerating, as well as that. His aim will let him accurately hit my forehead. Dealing with it now is impossible. Death is certainly awaiting me. A bullet is going to sink into my forehead. Pierce it. Destroy my brain and cause instant death. If it's an instant death, automatic recovery, auto heal, won't activate. It's my loss. Well, that's what would have happened if I actually did that though. That scene was a scene of the future that I saw with the power of the left eye the god bird Caledrius granted me. The Kokushigan. The Kokushigan can see several seconds in the future. Because it exhausts me. I hardly use its power, but I did that to destroy the hero of the rifle for sure. In reality, I'm only just about to jump out. If I charge and use blast wave like this, I'll die. So, I'll purposely weaken the blast wave from my right arm when using it. Then, the center wavers in the air swerving me just a bit away from the bullet as he shoots it, because his aim is precise. Both my arms break from being rash, but I don't care. Automatic recovery, auto heal, immediately activates. The hero of the rifle readies his rifle. While running in a complex pattern, I get closer. I'm using the most simple method of dealing with rifles, never standing in a straight line with the rifle point, as long as I keep that up. I won't get shot. Waiting for my arm to be healed by automatic recovery, auto heal, is irritating. With my sword in my mouth, I run and pass by him. The blade of the sword I'm holding in my mouth cuts the hero of the rifle's neck. Even with the power of his black mist, 
the injury he got from this sword clad in Guren's flames won't heal. I pinion the hero of the rifle from behind. Looting heal. Kiaruga. I might as well do it. I didn't make it in time with the hero of the axe, but I'll take this guy's ability, power and memories during the dozens of seconds until he dies. I want his abilities and above all, I want to know how the three heroes were killed. Two seconds after using imitation heal, the hero of the rifle died. He was a strong enemy. I even thought I might die for the first time in a while. I'll search through the memories I stole from him. TCH, so that's how it is. Kiaruga. I was curious about why the hero of the axe, who had that much ability, and the hero of the rifle, who was so proficient in covering for others, lost, but I could understand why after looking at his memories. It was only obvious for the three heroes to die. Even we would lose if we challenged something like that without setting up any countermeasures. The hero of the rifle's rifle isn't a god-made treasure arms, but it's a magic weapon made by a legendary dwarf that's said to be the world's greatest blacksmith. Because of that, although it's inferior to the god-made treasure arms, it's still an extremely powerful weapon. With that rifle in hand, I used transformation heal to change my abilities to the ones I took from him. This rifle has the ability to charge the bullets with the owner's magic. By charging the bullets with acceleration magic that the hero of the rifle was good at, he increased the bullet speed, therefore raising the power. Instead, I'm going to charge it with deterioration heal. The ability I got from him is called Ultra Senses. It makes the surrounding scenery look awfully slow. This thing's effect is stretching out the time your body senses, by around five times. It's an extremely powerful ability. Since I got it, I might as well use this rifle ability. I aim at the hero of the spear. Thanks to ultra senses, it's easy to aim. On top of that, I have ultra eyesight, kinetic vision and clairvoyance because of my jade eye, and can even see the future with my kokushigan. Missing would be harder. A bullet gets spit out, immediately piercing the hero of the spear's head. Although it pierced her head, her injury gets healed by the black mist. But the deterioration he lie charged in the bullet activated, twisting her whole body and the making her unable to even lift a finger. Yeah, this is convenient. I'll be keeping this rifle. Kiaruga. I fix the rifle onto my back with a belt and take all the bullets the hero of the rifle kept in his chest. Making these bullets by myself will take time, and I can't make a perfect one. Once I run out of bullets, I either have to ask his memories by using a keyword or throw away the rifle. Just like how I came here, I use Blast Wave to return to the spiral staircase. I collect the flame-clad swords stuck in the floor, and then, after kicking away Black Knights, I make it to the hero of the spear and cut her head off, as she dies. Her god-made treasure arms returns to being a jewel. Then, I put it in my pocket to let Freya equip it later. Cura already has a treasured sword that's been passed down for generations between sword saints. With the god-made treasure arms, Freya's fighting power will increase much more. I run with all my might towards the Reynara room. I thought it would be okay with Cura there, but as expected, I can't make them go against that thing. Please, be safe. Chapter 12 After defeating the hero of the rifle and the hero of the spear, I chased after Setsuna and the others who went ahead before me. I'm hanging the rifle the hero of the rifle had on my back, and two swords are hanging from my waist. The hero of the rifle's ability has an extraordinarily good utility, and our fighting power will increase if I make Freya use the hero of the spear's god-made treasure arms. However, it's true that I took longer than expected. I got surrounded by black knights after defeating the two heroes, and because I used up all the swords clad in Guren's flames, it took time to break away from them. I hope Setsuna and the others are safe. I didn't know that there would be a monster like that. I can understand why the three heroes were defeated. Even though Kyure is there, it's still dangerous. Kyure. The worst case scenario would be if they encounter the Black Knight that creates Black Knights, which defeated the three heroes, before I meet up with them. My understanding of that thing was mistaken. Although I did think the power to increase the number of Black Knights is astounding, that ability was the only one I wasn't cautious of. However, thinking about it carefully, it's obvious. 
The only existence that can create black knights, is the one that was given to the king by the demon king. In other words, creating black knights isn't possible unless you're equal to that existence. In other words, it's a replica of the existence that can grant the black power to people. The ingredient for making a replica is the crystallization of power of countless humans. Which means humans that receive the black power, give their power to the owner of the black power instead. The identity of the one that creates black knights, is actually a pool of power turned into a shape. What's troublesome about that, is that the crystallization of humans power makes its shape human, and it is a knowledge and skills of those humans. And from looking at the hero of the rifle's memories, I understood to turn a human into a black knight. The black knights that create black knights have to continue touching them for 17 seconds. If they touch for 17 seconds, no matter how strong the opponent is, it makes them join the group of black knights. It would be the end if Kira became a black knight. Kira, Kira and I are basically the same level. And for pure, short distance combat, Kira is stronger than me. So if Kira receives the black power, there's no way I could win. I should hurry, as I sprint to the Reynaro room. I feel an intense fighting spirit and magic power. I hear explosion sounds at random intervals too. It seems they're in combat. The fact that the battle is dragging on even with Guren's flames of purification, means that the thing is here. It seems the Diral King stationed his trump card in the Reynaro room where the spell ritual device is, rather than the spiral staircase. That's how valuable he sees the spell. The sound of combat stopped. It seems the battle ended. Kura, Freya, Satsuna, Kiruga. It was a disastrous situation. Freya fainted against a crumbled down wall and Setsuna was buried under rubble, unable to move. Ellen is hiding while trembling, and Kura's neck was grabbed by a guy that looks like an opera and is being held up. Not good. The sound of battle ended seven seconds ago. In ten more seconds. She'll become a black knight. I won't make it in time even if I rush over with my sword. Taking out the rifle on my back, I shoot the black Noparub's arm to tear it off, so Kura falls to the ground. Kayu, uh, black Noparub. The black Noparub screams. I shoot two times, blowing away its head and heart, and after I continue attacking it as it collapses, I run out of bullets. I throw the rifle behind me and run towards Kura. Guren, you're hiding, right? Come, Kiruga, go, Gosu Jin Sama, you're late, Guren. The cub Kitsun hiding in rubble comes out with trembling steps, and then, the black Nopera regenerates its torn off arm and whole filled body. Almost all of those injuries I gave it has regenerated. How irritating. Its recovery speed is in a different league to normal black knights. Pulling out a sword from my waist, I go towards the black Nopera instead of going towards Kura. Our swords clash. That's a heavy strike. His physical strength is almost equal to mine. I could have fended it off and counterattacked if it was just a strike that relied on power. But there's not that much difference in skill between us either. We exchange blows two, three times. Since our physical strength and skill are equal, I'll risk myself to go for a winning move. I won't just use a sword while exchanging blows. I continue chanting. Chanting while making violent movements is extremely difficult, but I've accumulated enough experience to be able to do that. The moment my fourth strike gets blocked, I activate wind magic and send the enemy flying. While I'm at it, I throw my sword too. It gets struck onto the wall, and then impaled in the next moment. Gosu Jin Sama really is strong. Go for it, Guren. Rather than cheering me, go burn Kira with your flames to the extent that she doesn't die. Before the black power gets to her, Kiruga, she would get seriously injured, Guren. As long as she's alive, I can use recovery heal, Kiruga. The black Noparab has the power of the humans that received the black power. It pulls out the sword sticking it on the wall and starts recovering. I glance at Guren burning Kura from the side and then run towards that thing. Once again, we start fighting. I'm still at a disadvantage and I can understand why Kura struggled. As for sword skill, Kura is higher, but the opponent has infinite stamina, concentration and resilience. What's even more troublesome, is that it has learning ability. It's being careful of the wind magic I used before. After treating Kura, Guren clad my sword in the flames of a divine beast.
but even if I attacked it with those flames, it won't be a fatal attack because the aggregate amount of black power it has is too great. Irritating. The only advantage I have is that although we both use other people's techniques and knowledge, that thing doesn't use them together like I do, it just uses it, without combining anything. For example, I'm still using magic while we exchange blows so that each swing of my sword and movement of my body leaves a trace of mana in the air. After swinging multiple time, I made a three-dimensional magic circle. Leaving mana in the air is an ultra-advanced technique. I've prepared it perfectly. The moment we exchange blows, I charge mana into the magic circle and shout Wind Dragon's Den, Kier Uga. The accumulated mana explodes, completely the magic, and countless blades of vacuum attacks. The black knopper rib in front of me turns into mints. Just using other people's techniques makes you an inferior copy. Only I can combine them and make something new. This probably won't be the winning move though. This can buy some time. If it's cut up this finely, it should take time to regenerate. I go towards Kira. Goss Eugene Sama, heal her quick. It's dangerous. Guren. I know. Also, just cladding a sword in flames and cutting that thing isn't making any progress. Prepare to fire flames with all your power. Kira Uga. Impossible. That thing is super fast. I can't hit it, Guren. Yeah, she probably can't. There's no way Guren could hit an opponent that Kira and I struggle against. It's okay, I'll make you hit it. You just have to think about firing flames with all your power, Kira Uga. I'll do it. If I don't do it, I'll be killed after all, Guren. Her tail starts shaking. Then, golden particles start spilling out of her tail. From what I can see, it looks like she's screwing around. But she seems to be putting all her power in it. Glancing at the minced, black nopperib, I see that his regeneration has progressed quite a lot. Just stay down for a bit longer. I finish treating Kira, and she opens her eyes. Kira Uga, did I, lose? Kira, the opponent was that thing after all. It can't be helped. I used recovery heal on you. But your soul still took damage. Keep resting for a bit more. Kira Uga. Guren's flames of purification just made it. If Guren's flames were later than that, it would have been bad. I see. I leave at you then. This is frustrating. Even though I was superior. Even though I cut over and over again with my sword clad in the flames of purification. I could not land a finishing blow and lost in the end. Once I can move again. I will immediately go to help you, Kira. As expected, fighting an opponent that can endure flames of purification while protecting Freya and the others would have been tough. The minced, black nopper recovered completely. Even if it can endure a sword clad in flames, it shouldn't be able to survive getting directly hit by Guren's full power flames. Multiple methods to make the extra large flames of purification hit it, come to my head. I'll have it pay for the sin of reaching a hand out to my women. I do feel sorry for it though, because that thing that isn't even a living thing, can't do anything that feels good. Well, I'll thoroughly take revenge on the Diral King for this thing too. Chapter 13 I continue fighting the Black Nopperib, although I minced it with my sword clad in flames of purification. It doesn't look like it's in pain. Fighting from the front against an opponent that even Kira couldn't win against will be tough. Guren is preparing to fire the flames of purification from behind me, because the black Nopperob's power is too strong, no matter how many times I cut it with a sword clad in flames of purification, there isn't much effect. So, I'm making Guren hit it with flames that have all her power in it. What I have to do is to make a situation where Guren can definitely hit her flames. You monster, Kiruga. I unintentionally cursed. This thing's physical ability exceeds mine. Even if I try to cover it with technique, there isn't much difference between us technique-wise. What's even more troublesome, is that this thing learns every time we exchange blows. Using tricks I've already used don't work anymore. Furthermore, the enemy has infinite stamina. The more time I take, the more of a disadvantage I have. Therefore, I'll decide the match in our next exchange. While parrying slashes that are becoming increasingly sharper and heavier, I prepare the groundwork. I continue refining mana inside my body. Fighting with a sword while refining mana is a technique this thing can't do. 
I've already refined enough mana to fire an ordinary spell. However, I need more. Even if I hit this thing with an ordinary spell, it could only serve as an obstacle. So, I'll continue refining it past my limit. This is a sage's technique from my memories. Normally, the amount of mana you can fire in one go is decided, and there's a limit to the power of that available mana. To break that limit, you need to make a flow from mana that you already fired and store it there, outside your body. By doing that, you can use magic with more mana than you can release. My brain started screaming from overload since I need to do this while having control over my sword against such a formidable enemy. Because of the recoil from surpassing my limits, a blood vessel connected to my brain cut, but it was healed by automatic recovery, auto heal. We both knocked our strongest sword strikes against each other, so the black nopperub and I were sent flying at the same time. Our postures were both thrown off balance, a countless number of tentacles grew from the black nopperub's body and are rushing on me, they have drill shaped tips, that are sharp enough to easily pierce my body, it probably decided that fighting like that instead of in its human form would be better. I knew it was this thing's power to regenerate limitlessly while hitting me with the most suitable solution one by one, but to think it was to this extent. There are 24 tentacles and each of them are rushing at me with different orbits and angles, I can't dodge them all, and blocking would be difficult, however, I just barely made it. I finished refining the necessary magic to stop this thing's time. Including all the mana circulating outside of my body, I fired the magic. Right now, this thing won't be able to dodge my magic because I felt certain victory. I poured all my resources into this attack because of the 24 tentacles it sent to me, it's unable to move. Naive, what I fired at it, is permafrost, Kyruga. rank 5 freezing magic, it's the highest level magic a human can use, to surpass a human's limit and use rank 6 and higher magic like Freya, you need the ability and the boost from a skill. A blizzard of absolute zero temperature engulfs the black Noparib. Everything in front of me froze and stopped moving. Freezing black knights is effective against them, and that doesn't change for this thing, even if it's a superior type. Gurin, you can fire it now. Kyruga, I shout. Normally, this ice would stay frozen for a whole day, but the opponent is this thing after all. In reality, I can already see cracks starting to appear. The inside will probably break in a few seconds. Okay, Gurin will show you the flames of a divine beast. Gurin, the Kitsune cub especially transforms into her kitsune eared beautiful girl appearance, clad in golden flames. Seeing her swing her tail on purpose to show off, irritated me a bit. Oh flames of God's majesty, burn this corrupted one to nothing. Holy flame explosion. Gurin, enough golden flames to fill the pathway passed by. Those flames seem to be specialized in purification since although I was engulfed in the flames along with the black nopperib, I didn't feel any heat at all. On the contrary, the black nopperib disappeared while raising a scream. Black smoke leaked out from its body, but even that was burned to nothing by the flames. As the flames cease, I see the black nopperib has completely vanished. Just in case. I used magic to search the surroundings but there wasn't any reaction. Gurin is amazing, how's that? Gurin, yeah, you're amazing, but tell me beforehand if you're going to shoot me too, it's bad for my heart. Kyruga, the moment I was engulfed by those golden flames, I braced myself for death. Don't worry, there's no way Gurin would kill Gosujin Sama. Gurin, you might actually do it though. Kyruga, how rude. If Gosu Jin Sharma died, Gurin would definitely be killed too since she's a traveling companion. Gurin, it's because you made those sorts of reasons that I can't trust you. Kyruga. Gurin tilts her head. Even if I explain it to this poor Kitsune, she probably wouldn't understand. Gurin, do you still have surplus mana? Kyruga. Around half. Gurin. In that case, drink a mana recovery increasing potion. This was the opening performance. To defeat the boss, we need those flames you just used. Kyruga. There's still the Diral King and the existence that was given to the Diral King. At the very least, I want two shots worth of that much firepower. Don't wanna. That doesn't taste good. Gurin. I'll let you eat a ton of delicious meat after everything is over if you drink it. Kyruga. 
Pass me the mana recovery potion, Guren. She returned to her cub form, skillfully took off the cork with her front leg and started drinking. Although that is cute, it would probably be easier to drink it in her girl form. I look towards Setsuna and the others, to see Kyura helping everyone in the making them drink potions. Failure. Setsuna wasn't useful. Setsuna. Me too. I shamefully fainted immediately. Freya. It seems Setsuna and Freya are worrying about the fact that they lost to the Black Noparib. The opponent was just too powerful. I won't tell you to not feel down about it, but you should change your mind now because I need both your powers after this. Kyuga. NN Setsuna will do her best. Setsuna. Yes, I will take back this failure. Freya, I'm glad they both faced forwards. Finally, Ellen approached me. Kyrugan is armor. Since the enemy has used one of their trump cards, we need to go to the enemy's weak point. We should destroy it as soon as possible. Ellen. I agree. If we're lucky, there might not be any more enemies like the Black Noparib. Kyrugan. That's wishful thinking. But once the Diral King knows the Black Noparab was defeated, he'll definitely send reinforcements. In that case, moving before that happens is for the best. We formed a battle formation and advanced forwards. In the Diral Kingdom, there's a white, beautiful flower called the Rainara which was decided to become the national flower. We're currently running towards a room full of those Rainaras. The Rainara itself is beautiful. But the positioning of each and every one of them are overflowing with a sense of beauty. Because this was made by that princess flair. I can't believe it. We arrive at the center of the room. Kyruga, this is nostalgic. Kyura, you're right. This is where I met you. Kyruga, I came here before to heal Kyura. At that time, I couldn't even imagine that there was a forbidden spell ritual device. The floor in the center was made into a hidden door. You need a key to open it. But I didn't do anything troublesome like getting the key myself. I changed the shape of my sword with alchemy magic. I made it into a hammer with a huge spike on it. And swing it down with all my strength. The floor broke, and I can see stairs going down. By breaking through this, I can go to the place where the forbidden spell ritual device is set up. Oh yeah. I forgot about this. Freya, make a contract with this. Kyruga. Ye, yes. Kiruga Sama Freya I hand Freya the god made treasure arms I stole from the hero of the spear I'll have Freya power up before the final decisive battle that's a tool that only heroes can use if you grasp it tightly and pray it will become the weapon you want you can pick any ability it has too I won't give you advice at this point in time you should just think of an ability you need the most and make a contract with it Kiruga the weapon I want. In that case, I only have one answer. Freya. Freya prays, making the ruby turn into a staff. That's a staff made from the branch of a large tree which is overflowing with vitality. It really resembles the staff she used in the first world. That's a good staff. Kyruga. I will definitely show that this staff I received from you, will be useful. Freya. I'll be looking forward to it. Freya is going to fight her father next. I'll have her use all the power she can to kill her own father. We go down the stairs. There weren't any traps nor troops waiting in ambush. We're advancing well. And at the end, I can see a wide room. Opening the door, I go inside. Welcome, hero of healing Kiru. Question mark. There's a majestic middle-aged man with a white beard. He's wearing a luxurious robe and a crown that only one person in this country is allowed to wear. You were hiding in this underground place. Ha, huh, King Diral, Kyruga. The person there was Prum Diral, the Diral King. By looking at him with my Jedi, I find out his abilities. Dash 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 dash. Race, human, name, Prum. Class, Magic Knight. Level, 41. Level limit, 41. Status, MP, 153-153. Physical attack, 81. Physical defense, 67. Magical attack, 81. Magical resistance, 75. Speed, 55. Talent values, MP, 90. Physical attack, 93. Physical defense, 75. Magic attack, 92 magic resistance 84 speed 60 total value 494 abilities fencing lv3 attack magic fire lighting lv2 skills 
MP recovery rate increase LV2, Magic Knight's skill, MP recovery rate is 10% faster. Attack Magic Power Increase LV2, Magic Knight's skill, adds a positive correction to Attack Magic Fencing Correction LV3, Knight's skill, attacks that use a sword get a positive correction, dash 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 dash. Back when I first looked at his status, I didn't really understand the meaning of human, comma but now I do, he had already quit being human since the first time I met him. Black Miasma is flowing into the Diral King, then, his level steadily rises, ignoring his level limit, it goes up at an impossible pace, then, his level even reaches level 300, this isn't just any Black Miasma according to the memories of the previous Demon King, it's the true form of the power that made him go crazy, Hero of Healing Eru, you are strong, letting your power uselessly disappear would be disappointing. How about becoming my right hand man, the Diral Kingdom? No, I will gain everything in this world. You will become the right hand man of such a person. You understand the meaning of that, right? Prum. Who knows? Rather than that, I wanted to ask whether you hate me for killing both your daughters. If I were you, I would be so hateful that I would want to tear you limb from a limb. Kier Uga. I do not mind. Those were just convenient pieces. If I can gain more useful pieces, then I do not need them anymore. Prum. I stifle a smile. He still hasn't realized that Freya and Delen are Princess Flair and Princess Norn. Ha. Huh. How idiotic. Besides, he asked me to become his right hand man. Do I understand the meaning of that? You're fucking joking. In the first place, this world is mine. I'll live however I want to live. Even if I have to die for it, I don't want to be someone's subordinate. So, how about it, Hero of Healing? Do you have an answer? Prum. Of course I do. I didn't even have to think about it. My answer is, you're an idiot. Kiruga. This is the opening performance of my fight against Bullet. My last revenge target. I'll kill him quickly. Chapter 14 I face the Diral King. What was slightly unexpected, is that he invited me to become his subordinate, considering he's inviting the man who killed his two daughters. He must have not had that much love towards them. I feel sorry for Freya and Ellen. This might be related to why their personalities were so warped. Of course, it's not like I would forgive them because of that. I don't forgive anyone that steals from me. It doesn't matter what kind of circumstances they have. Just that action of stealing is everything. This man is a revenge target too. He's the symbol of the Diral Kingdom, and an arrogant king. The original cause of why I had to live such a shitty life in the first world was because of him. So, I'll steal everything from him and brutally kill him. How foolish, hero of healing Eru. Even though you refused, you would still become a puppet with my power. Just like the hero of the gun. Prum. Hearing the Diral King's words as if they're scoffing at me, the corners of my lips raise. I knew it. This guy's dumb. He hasn't even realized that the hero of the gun retained himself. I should put him down already. Guys, let's go. We'll kill him and take back the harmony of the world. If we defeat the Diral King, this meaningless war against the demons will end. Kiruga. I loudly express my public stance at the top of my voice. However, I'm not lying. Eve has already become the Demon King. So we should be able to manipulate everyone by using Eve. Then if we just put Freya as the head of the Diral Kingdom, the world will become mine. I don't particularly have any interest in that, but to let myself live happily, making the world peaceful and beautiful is better. Yes, we will definitely defeat him. Kira, I'll back you up with all my power. Freya, NN. Setsuna will do her best. Setsuna. Kura. Freya, and Setsuna. Each of them are putting in their fighting spirit. That's good. He's an opponent that we'll all lose against if we don't brace ourselves. Although he's small on the inside, he's stronger than the Black Noparub from before. After all, since he's the real one, the concentration of Black Miasma is incomparable to it. Even with Guren's flames, we might not be able to win if we fight normally. However, I have a trick. The previous demon king had been researching to conquer the parasite-like existence in him, and I gained those memories. In fact, I could have easily defeated the Black Noparub from before if I used that. The reason why I didn't do that though, 
is because if the enemy knew of my countermeasures, they would make a countermeasure to my countermeasure. A trump card is worthy of being called a trump card because you don't use it until the very end. The diarrhal king's body swells up and black tentacles jump out in every direction. Good grief, that from the start, ha, huh, seems you quit being human since ages ago. Kia Uga. Kira and I draw our swords, while the other three let us go past while hiding behind the earth wolf rare maid. That was a heavy blow. Each and every strike the tentacles make, rival a full power strike of an elite swordsman. Freya, Kia Uga. I know. Freya, I gave Freya an instruction beforehand. That instruction was to completely stop his movements. No matter how much you hurt an opponent that is the black power, they can just regenerate. So, freezing them in ice and stopping their movements is the best. A rain of ice bullets pour down one after the other. The average magician would only give this magic the effect that it looks like it has. However, Freya is different. Simultaneously with when they pierce the tentacles, the cold air stored inside the bullets explode open, freezing the tentacles. Because several tentacles stopped, it became easier to get closer. Goss Eugene Sama, let's go. Guren, don't go out of there. If you do, I won't be able to protect you. Kiruga. Guren shows her face from my chest. She's hiding in my clothes in her Kitsune Cub mode. I can't even damage him without her flames, but even if my sword is clad in flames, they go out with each sword stroke against him. So, without Guren at the front lines, recluding my sword with flames isn't as smooth. And, this is the safest place in the front lines. As long as she's with me, I can protect her even when I'm in front. Foolish, 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 prum. After becoming a black, soft and flabby lump, the Diarrhal King is sending his thoughts as he lost his vocal cords. I think that it's more foolish to want power enough to have to look like that. But our values are probably just different. An extra large ice spear pierces into the black, soft and flabby lump itself. However, it was swallowed up before the power of the ice could release itself. It can't freeze the Diarrhal King from the inside either. What's going on with his insides? Kiruga. I'm not sure. But... It is dangerous. Kura, while dodging a tentacle that regenerated again with a sideways jump, I look at him carefully. Guren, clad my sword in your strongest flames. Kiruga. Okay, Guren. Guren's power covers my sword, and it bursts into flames, ignoring the durability of my sword. Then, I brandish my sword and throw it. The sword pierced him like an arrow, and it was swallowed up. He isn't showing any pain. Kura. Don't get close to that thing. Even with a sword clad in flames of purification, that happens. You'll just get swallowed up. Kiruga. It seems like that, but I wonder how we should defeat it. Kura. We continue to fight a defensive battle while keeping our distance. I give occasional damage by closing the distance and letting Guren fire her flames of purification, but they aren't decisive blows. It seems he's a monster that surpassed my expectations. Good grief. He isn't affected him no matter how many times we hit him. Guren's flames are unexpectedly shabby. Ha, huh, Kiruga. It's just that that thing is too amazing. We're basically trying to evaporate the ocean with a torch. Guren. That's an interesting way of putting it. I ward off another tentacle that comes at me. Thankfully, the tentacles don't have an absorption function. I have a good idea. Kiruga. Guren can listen. Guren. How about I throw you? who's clad in your strongest flames, and let him swallow you up so that you can burn him from the inside. If your power really is appropriate for a divine beast, you should win against him. Kiruga. It's a good idea if I say so myself. After all, Kiran always makes a triumphant face about being a divine beast. She can definitely burn that monster. Death. Impossible. If Kiran goes inside that, she will immediately die. Kiran. TCH, no good huh, Kiruga. My great idea was rejected. This kitsune cub is too selfish. Then, I'll have to use a different trick. Anyway, Guren. Keep looking for chances to shoot your flames, Kiruga. Okay, Guren. Like this. We're whittling him down while I become the shield. To go on the attack, I need to make a chance. It'll take time to use that. Freya's power is indispensable too. For a while. She stops the rain of ice, thinking that small tricks don't have much effect, Freya's probably going to fire a powerful magic, from the other side of the bulky earth wall, 
I can sense the swelling of an explosive magic. It seems the Diaral King noticed that too. One tentacles grows sharper and bigger, and is extending to the earth wall. Even though it's a bulky, magically strengthened earth wall, that tentacles should be able to pierce it. I instinctively reach out to it with my hand. It pierces my arm, but I just barely hold on. And then, hi 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 hi, get ready, prum. Are you eroding me? Ear uga. Black miasma flows into my body and creeps up. I immediately cut off my arm, and automatic recovery, auto heal, activates. Looking at the arm I cut off, I see that it was dyed in black and it became just like the Black Knight. If I was just a few seconds late, I would have become like that too. Disappointing, disappointing, you should have just become one of our comrades. Prum, I refuse. Ear Uga. Quite a lot of my stamina was taken away from that regeneration of my arm. However, thanks to that, I could protect Freya. The swelling of magic stops and Freya's voice resounds loudly. It seems she finally completed her powerful magic. Rank 7 Magic, Ice Prison. Freya, bulky, transparent ice walls engulf the black, soft and flabby lump from all sides. I see, if freezing it directly doesn't work then surrounding it with ice from all sides would be better. That isn't just any ice either, it's magic ice, that is even harder than iron. The fact that it's rank 7 magic isn't just for show. The Diral King is trying to break the ice from the inside with his sharp tentacles. Knowing that it'll become a competition of whether he'll freeze over first or whether he'll break the ice first, Freya fired the same magic again two more times, with more bulkiness and power. The Diral King, who was rampaging inside before, become clearly duller. It's a threefold, absolute wall. Only Freya could pull off this kind of feat. Looking closely, I can see the jewel on Freya's staff shining. It probably has the ability to stock magic inside. That's the ability Freya put on the god made treasure arms. Huh. With this, she can fire three big spells with rapid fire. Kirugasama, I sealed its movements. Freya, good job. Now I can deal the finishing blow. Kiruga. I have the trump card I continued preserving until now. It's probably the only telling blow that can affect it. And it's something only I can do. While fighting against the freeze, the Diral King tries to break the ice prison. I'll strike him hard at the same time he breaks open this threefold prison, with the culmination of my power as the hero of healing. Chapter 15. The Diral King is trapped inside the ice prison Freya fired. It's a threefold defensive wall. Not only is it hard, but it also dulls the opponent's movements by freezing them. Even with the power of the black miasma, it's not something that can break that easily. I concentrated my mind during this time we gained. Obviously, the black existence has some kind of close relationship to the demon king. The cause of the demon king going mad was the black power after all. Due to the black power, the gentle demon king went into the rage and eventually started rampaging, seeking blood. And, a hero is an existence made to kill the demon king. They're made to do so. Because of that, the power to kill the black power should be inside heroes by nature. However, the loss of that power from heroes went unnoticed, because the state of the heroes changed. Even so, I can take it back. Kiruga. By nature, Recovery Heal have the ability to return things to how they should be. So, by using Recovery Heal on the concept of a hero itself, I can take back the power that could be called the essence of a hero. Using Recovery Heal on a concept is partly in the domain of God so I couldn't do it without the Philosopher's Stone in the first world. Now that my level has gone over 200, I can just barely do it if it's something easy to meddle with, like something related to myself. On top of that, meeting Guren contributed greatly. I've seen Guren's flames of purifications multiple times so I got a concrete image of how heroes kill the black power and saw the correct answer. I close my eyes and make a strong image, the existence of true hero that can kill the black power. While strengthening my image, I continue heightening my mana to the limit. Kirugasama, the barrier is at its limit. The threefold ice wall will not last. Then, one more. Ha ha, that, was all of my mana. Freya, because Freya added another rice wall. The intensity of the wall rose. However, it seems she used up all of her mana with that, 
as she collapsed while breathing wildly. Even Freya would use up all her mana if she fires four rounds of rank 7 magic. I don't think that's pathetic. She properly carried out her job. She gave me the time to use my power. The Diral King's frozen body swells up even further and thorn-like things projected out of cracks on his body. Those things exploded, breaking the threefold ice wall together with a thunderous roar and he finally started on the ice wall that Freya just added. The added ice wall would probably break within 10 seconds too. However, I finished my preparations. Recovery heal. Kyauga. I powerfully let out those words. With the image of a hero's true appearance in mind, I cast recovery heal on myself. I got reborn as a true hero. Holy and sacred power like Guren's flames is overflowing inside of me. This is what a true hero is. Huck Uga. I recognize, control, manage, and gather the overflowing light in my palm. Simultaneously with that, Freya's ice wall completely broke. Sparkling fragments of ice flutter about in the air. The Diral King, who had become a black lump and is swelling up, raised an angry roar while rushing at me. It seems he's quite afraid of this power. Without even looking at his expression, I can see the Diral King's fear and how desperate he is. That's probably the instinct of people affected by the black power. Even though it's a life-risking charge, his force seems somewhat weaker than before. He broke Freya's fourfold ice wall after all. He's exhausted. Freya really did a good job. Now, return to your original form. Kyauga. I stack magic with the light of a hero and charge with my right hand in front. The magic I stacked with it is recovery heal. It's my symbol and the magic I trust the most. I'm using this recovery heal to return the Diral King back to when he was human. I fire the light of purification, which unravels the black miasma. Then, my hand touches the Diral King and recovery heal activates. It gradually turns the Diral King, who had fallen into a monster, back to being human. Although my recovery heal is a power that returns things to their original state. If I don't shake off the black miasma with my power as a hero, turning him back to human would probably have been impossible. This is my power that had awakened as a true hero. Jaya Prum. A death scream resumes. That was the Diral King's death scream and the death scream of the black existence inside the Diral King. The presence of his power disappears. Then, even his scream disappears. It's just the Diral King, who's back in his human form in front of my eyes. A miserable, naked old man. We finally won. If I used my power as a true hero, I could have easily won against the heroes that were afflicted by the black power or the black noparib. I knew that I could take back this power from when I experimented quite a while back, but I hadn't even used it once until now. After all, if it's known that I can use the soul ability to destroy the foundation of the black existence, the opponent will run and hide. If that happened, I know he would hide in a cellar and infinitely continue sending small fright to have a war of attrition. So that it doesn't become like that, I kept it hidden until just now. As expected of Kiruga-sama. Amazing. Satsuna. Yes, that was a truly divine power. I didn't know you could do this too. Kira. Well, it wasn't as amazing as Guren. Guren's flames of purification when she's serious isn't something of this level. Guren. Setsuna. Kura and Guren rush over to me. Freya doesn't seem to have the energy to even stand, so Ellen lent her shoulder and they're slowly heading this way. This is the power of a true hero, what the previous demon king wanted from the bottom of his heart. Kyauga. The previous demon king feared the black power that changed himself. He then realized that only heroes could destroy it, but he despaired after realizing that that power was lost from heroes at a certain turning point. However, it wasn't in vain. Because I had that information, I awakened to this power and destroyed the black existence. If Eve ever gets overwhelmed by her power as a demon king, I'll use this power and save her. This was a good experiment to do before using it on Eve. I wouldn't want to suddenly use this power on her without testing it. By using recovery heal, I return my body to its former state and seal the power of a true hero. The original power of a hero is a double-edged sword as it shaves down your lifespan. If I stay in that form, my lifespan will probably be exhausted in two or three years. That's probably why the power of heroes changed. I kick the fainted Diral King flying and proceed inside the door. There, 
I can see a grandiose ritual device. A magic square was drawn on the whole floor, and there's a candle stand to set up the philosopher's stone in the center. This is a magic formula of obedience, which can swallow up this continent by using the philosopher's stone and makes the people have absolute obedience to the diural king. If this magic spell is activated, he would have seriously been able to take over the world. I start breaking it into pieces. If I change this magic formula and use it, I could take over the world instead of the diural king, but what would be fun about that? That's no different to playing with dolls. It was fun making Princess Flair turn into Freya, but I'll definitely get bored of only playing with dolls. I don't want to make the world into something boring. With magic and violence, I destroyed it so much that it's impossible to restore. Well then, now that I've destroyed what I needed to destroy, all that's left is dealing with that. Kyruga. I go back to the room from before. There, I see the Diral King tied up by Kira. Although the Diral King lost his black power, he's a dangerous man that has the power of an elite magic swordsman. The Diral King awakens with an expression full of dignity that's appropriate for a king. He opens his mouth. O oh hero of healing Kiru, thank you for saving me. It seems I had been seeing a long dream for so long. I was overwhelmed by that, and performed unforgivable things, Prum. I'll desperately try to hold in my laughter. This is what the Diral King is saying. All the wrongdoings I did until now was because of the Black Power. And I'm not at fault. King Diral. Don't worry. The Black Power has all vanished. Kiruga. I see, the Hero of Healing is quite amazing. To think you would even be able to heal me. I lost my heart made this world fall into chaos and tormented my citizens. I want to atone for that, Prum. His mouth is going on and on. Words begging for me to save his life are flying out one after the other. He wants to atone for it. His intention behind it is not wanting to die and not wanting to lose his authority. After all, if he can atone for it by working as a king, there's no way he would be killed and his authority won't be stolen either. The Diral King is thinking about things in the future, and is desperately trying to make me promise him. What a filthy way of living. I feel nauseous. I see. You want to atone for your sins to the citizens, huh? All right. I'll deal with that. Kiruga. Ooh, thank you. I will make use of my power for the world's peace. Prum. I survived. Believing that, the Diral King's expression loosened. What an idiot. There are other ways to atone for your sins. Let's see. Well, I'll stick you to the plaza. There are as many people that hate you as the number of stars. I'll have you clear away as much resentment of the citizens as you can. By giving them a chance to take revenge, they'll definitely be happy. Killing the person that ruined your life is the greatest enjoyment. I know about it well. Kiruga. While grabbing the Diral King's hair tightly, I declare that there's no way I would let him atone for it by doing his job as a king. I'll use him to let the citizens vent out their gas. This guy has a uselessly high level and status so he won't die that easily against ordinary people. He'll definitely become a good toy. Wait, please wait. I meant atoning as in atoning through my ability as a king. Tha, that's right. I can give you all sorts of benefits. So, Prum, weren't you the one that said you wanted to atone? That's why I'm letting you do it. I don't need your charity. Just shut up. Your breath smells. Kiruga. I kick his chin and make him faint. Just as he wanted. I'll let the Diral King atone to the citizens. If he was a beautiful girl, I could have had fun too. But I'm not interested in sodomy. I'll have fun watching the Diral King get exposed to violence and shame from the craving citizens from a special seat. Until Freya and I calm down the Diral Kingdom. We need to let the citizens vent their anger. He'll definitely be useful. Now I've accomplished my first objective, Kiruga. Now I need to capture Bullet, who has the Philosopher's Stone and take plenty of revenge on him. It was long, my revenge against the hateful three heroes and the Diral King. It'll only be a bit longer until my dearest wish is achieved. Epilogue. Shapes and patterns were drawn all over the floor and walls of the room that was prepared to offer the Philosopher's Stone. That room had the ritual device the Diral King needed to become the supreme ruler of the world. I destroyed it until there was nothing left of it. I didn't even leave behind any dust. Something like this is unnecessary for my world. So the black power of the small fry disappears after the foundation is defeated. 
Huck Ear Uga Guren is actually surprised too. We're lucky that we don't have to clean up. Those guys stink, Guren. The inside of the castle was overflowing with black knights, but they had all collapsed and dried up completely. The black miasma had disappeared from the people that were afflicted by it. However, it seems it won't just be a happy end with those guys going back to normal. Since the miasma had been a part of them for a long time, their bodies couldn't exist anymore without the miasma. It seems the Diral King, who was the foundation of the miasma, didn't die because my recovery heal turned him back to normal, but normally, he would have just become like these mummy knights in front of me. We wandered around the castle, but there were only mountains of corpses. There were a few people who weren't afflicted by the black miasma, and they were trembling in happiness from being released. It seems they were forcibly made to look after the black knights. Freya stands next to me. Kirugasama, why did you make my face look like this? Freya, it's to say that Princess Flair came back to save her country. I was thinking of making the survivors of the castle burn that image into their eyes. Kiruga, just as I was planning, every time Freya, who has Flair's appearance, says I have come back to save the Diral Kingdom from my mad father. The survivors all prostrate themselves and respect her as if a present world goddess descended. It seems they had been going through quite a tough lifestyle, with people like them here. It will be easier to make the new Diral Kingdom. Ellen, I'm thinking of leaving the new Diral Kingdom to you. We're all going to stay here for a few days, but you stay here for, let's see. Well, around a month, I'll definitely come back to get you. Stabilize the political situation until then, and raise a successor so they can stand in even while you are absent. Kiruga, in just one month, reorganize the diural kingdom that has become so worn out and ruined. Furthermore, it's in a situation where a countless number of neighboring towns resent it, thinking about it normally. It should be impossible, but Helen's identity is Princess Norn. Princess Norn has the ability to do at least that much. I will show you I can do it if I have enough authority. Being separated from Kiruga armor for a whole month will be tough, but I will definitely accomplish it. However, please visit the Diral Kingdom several times during that month. The champions Hero of Healing Kiruga and Hero of Magic Princess Flair. Using those two existences is required to rebuild the Diral Kingdom. Ellen. Yeah. I'll contact you when I found out my schedule. Flair and I will go to you. Kiruga. Ellen's words are quite right. The Diral Kingdom itself has no more power to grasp the hearts of the citizens. Without champions, who will be the idols, nothing can happen. From start to end, we patrolled the whole castle and then wrote a letter to Baronico about how we defeated the Diral King and occupied the castle. I thought there would be soldiers cooperating with the Black Knights and some arguments. But because of Princess Flair's existence, everyone easily changed sides to us. It's going just as I thought it would, but I made one big blunder because the black miasma all disappeared. There's a chance the hero of the gun bullet died. Even though I wanted to torment and kill him thoroughly with my own hands, thinking about it normally, he probably died while he was on the way to the Diral Castle. Because of that, the Philosopher's Stone he had is also missing. Searching for a stone in this wide world is almost impossible. Kiruga-sama, why are you smiling? Setsuna. Setsuna asks me that in wonder. I was smiling, huh? No, it's nothing. Kiruga. I dodged the question but there actually is a reason why I was smiling. I'm not completely sure, but I feel like Bullet is still alive even in this situation. I have a premonition that he won't die until I kill him and the Philosopher's Stone will properly return to me. I'll wait for now. Waiting is my speciality. The stage for my revenge will probably be prepared in the near future. It became busy after that. People delegated to reorganize the Diral Kingdom immediately came from Ranalita. And with Ellen standing at the top, the Diral Kingdom seriously started getting rebuilt. As expected, politics. Economics and military affairs were out of my expertise, so I just told Ellen my plans and left the rest to her. It's what you call putting the right person in the right place. Nothing good will come out of an amateur speaking up. However, even though I'm an amateur, the broken Diral Kingdom seemed like it was coming back together at an amazing pace. In reality, 
the citizens who had evacuated to other places, all started coming back one after the other. I'm glad I left her as Ellen without killing Princess Norn, after the revival of the Diral Kingdom. I guess I'll ask her about what we should do with the demon territory too. Eve only just became the demon king over there, so it's rough. Ellen's wisdom should help. And then, can we finally leave the Diral Kingdom? Kiaruga. Our last job has finished after all. Freya, today is exactly ten days after we defeated the Diral King. Normally, commoners can't enter the Diral Castle. But there are commoners clamoring in the courtyard right now. And, we purposely changed into battle-use clothes rather than gaudy clothing, with the god-made treasure arms in our hands. This way is better if we want to show up as champions. Freya, who has Princess Flair's appearance, and I go out on the balcony. The fact that the hero of healing and Princess Flair defeated the Diral King and saved this country, is common knowledge. However, there's a meaning behind actually showing the people the appearances of the champions and letting them hear our words. We show ourselves, and the people already start raising cheers because of that. Then, Freya went out in front. Everyone, because I noticed the darkness hidden in the kingdom, my life was aimed at. So I left the country together with the Hero of Healing, and then, we gathered cooperators throughout our journey and gained power. With comrades and power, I returned to the country after hearing that my father showed his real nature, to save this country and above all, the people. Freya being moved by Princess Flair's words, there were people who shed tears and people who raised war cries, they had various reactions, but they all accepted it with passion. As expected, being a beautiful girl is an advantage. Besides, Freya's voice is good too. Her voice soaks into their hearts easily. I will definitely, take back the diral kingdom that I love. For that sake, everyone, please lend me your power. Freya, she lowers her head. The citizens respond to that. What a beautiful scene. Looking at it from the outside, it's a perfectly moving tale. Above all, the actor is good. And to rebuild the diral kingdom, we need to continue squeezing out more. The sins need to be atoned for, by the king and the nobles. Freya, together with her words, soldiers clad in full body armor appeared. They were pulling luggage carriers. On those luggage carriers, multiple pillars had been set upon them, and naked men were fastened to them. Because they had such deplorable appearances, the citizens didn't know who they were for a moment. However, people who realized gradually started appearing. Those people were the Diral King and the big nobles of this country. It's natural that the Diral King has to atone for his sins. So we're having the others that could cause harm to this country disappear along with him. So, we made the ones that Helen decided were harmful insects into war criminals. Harmful insects are unnecessary for the Diral Kingdom I picture. They are the people that destroyed this country. They are the main causes of everyone's torment. Let us knock our anger torment and hatred onto them, so that we can face forwards from tomorrow. Freya, although it was rebuilt, the deep hatred, anger and sadness remained in the hearts of the people. That's also something unnecessary for the new Diral Kingdom. So, we're making them spit it out here. Revenge is an amusement that's necessary for living healthy days. We're giving the people the chance for revenge. The soldiers start walking while pulling the load carrying. They're going to go one lap around the town from now. Someone throws a rock. Ouch. Sto. Stop it. I am. Hija. Prum. It hits the Diral King's head, and he raises a scream. I heard the laughter of someone else. The soldiers don't stop them. Then, someone else throws a rock. In the blink of an eye, a rain of rocks started pouring down on them. Not only the Diral King, the nobles scream out their names and statuses to threaten the citizens. But they don't have their dignity when they're bound naked. Sto, stop, please stop, reflect. I am reflecting, forgive me, Prum. The threatening finally changed into begging for their lives. No, apologizing. People who have never lowered their heads before being disgraced in front of commoners is extremely laughable and pleasant. However, there's no way they would stop with that apology. Within a few minutes, while the nobles all fainted or died, the Diral King hasn't fainted yet since he was stronger than the others. Normally, the Diral King wouldn't feel any pain from the stones, but I moderately tampered with his status. I made his defensive power low, 
but I strengthened his vitality and regenerative power. He'll receive the pain properly, but he won't die. After all, it wouldn't be fun if he became at ease immediately. I need to make him have his fill of this disgrace and pain. As the luggage carriers leave the garden, the people chase after it too. He's going to take a full lap around the town while basking in stones and jeers. Today will probably be the longest day in his life for the Diral King. We've dealt with the cleanup. Now we have finished all our work in the Diral Kingdom. First I'll return to the demon territory while gathering information about the hero of the gun, bullet, and the philosopher's stone. I'm worried about Eve, and more than that, I yearn for her. I'll have to give her plenty of love. The ruler of this world is me. Kyauga. The demon territory and the diaral kingdom both move at my will. You could say that I have control over this world. I'm looking forward to now on. I'll live in a way that's amusing for me. On the 1st of April, the Kadokawa Sneaker third volume and the first volume of the manga will come out simultaneously. This time's one has even better art and contents. Please enjoy the paperback version that has erotic scenes and rape that I can't write on.